2019. It is day two. We're at Newcastle Town Football Club. Yesterday, the American football team won. Uh, Staff's American team, uh, football team won 25 points to nine to level varsity 2019. But we are here at Newcastle Town Football Club for the men's football. I am joined by Joe Williams and Cletus. What are your expectations for tonight, Joe? A good game, first of all. I would like to say, I think, we've just got the staff team going into the dressing room for the pre-match talk. Uh, so they're going to be fired up, as well as Keel, who have just gone in just moments before. I think we're going to be expecting uh, a fierce rivalry here today. But I think the fans have come out in their droves, so it's going to be very exciting, for sure. And Cletus? Well, this game is just screaming out, goals, goals, goals. We want to get some goals. We want to see some, some good plays. We want to see players actually going up and getting some goals for stats for both teams. And you just want to see a very good game. And as we know, varsity, it's a very feisty game. Are we expecting ill discipline? I think it's fair to say that there's always been a fierce rivalry between the universities. Um, it's not just in football. We saw that with American football on Sunday. That's obviously a bit more of a physical game. But today, I think they're going to be... We would like to see it to be disciplined, for sure, but I think that it's fair to say that it's going to be quite rowdy in the crowds as well as on the field. I mentioned in pre-show uh, a little earlier on, my first year, uh, the, the game was stopped about two or three minutes early because there was a fight broke out on the pitch. It was like, well, this game's going nowhere. We'll just end it now. It's about 88, 89 minutes on the clock. I don't think it's going to get to that, do you think? You know, it, you know it's, it's a game of fierce rivalry. You know, you've got to have respect for your opponents as well, but also when it comes... When it comes to playing football, there's no respect when you want to win. You want to win, you want to win a game. So you're going to go out there and just basically just win a game. But we don't want no fights. Yeah, there'll be some few tackles and few um, quite high intense moments. But you just want a clean game. But we want the rivalry. We want that that that, that sort of passion of football mm. that you see from all sort of rivals. I mean, I was speaking to the kill manager just before the game, and he's really nailed in that this is almost their World Cup this is their Super Bowl so it's going to be very exciting uh, so I've got some team news as well for you uh, for Staffs and for Keel. Uh, starting in goal for uh, Staffs is Ben Cadman then we've got uh, Sam Kulf uh, Josh Kerr, Alfonso Gonzalez, George Woodruff Tyler Sims, uh, Mackenzie Faulkner Xavier Tupucci, have I said that right? Yeah. I, I hope I said right. that right um, Edward Capewell, Chris Smith, Christoph Az Azimoli. We'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> apologies if I get any of these names wrong, by the way. Uh, Adam Thorley, Connor Gittins, uh, Connor O'Hara, Nick Gray and Robert Falker. That is the uh, full squad for Staffs. Stand-up players in there. I think for me, Josh Kerr in centre-back, he's been a big presence throughout the season. Um, for the rest of the team, they've really got a real pile together. They haven't had the best of seasons. They come off, we were speaking, me and Cletus, just yeah, before the work. game. They started off well with a 5-0 five, five win, but they haven't really been able to pick up the pace through that. So it's going to be more so a team effort, and Josh Kerr is going to be rallying them from the back. And uh, for Kiel, we've got uh, Lloyd Murphy, Sonny, uh, Homu, Ewan Griffiths, uh, Murray Burt, Emmanuel Adinie, George Barber, Joe Gilsford, uh, Eddie Ran, David Mosley, Josh Chave, uh, Jack Wills, uh, Gwyn, Pew, uh, Gwyn Pew Jones, it's a bit of a mouthful, uh, Harry Grange, James Conroy, uh, Holly Tomlin, uh, Oliver Tomlins, um, Joseph Marin, Akute Hyges. Hey, hey is, uh, and El, uh, Elliot Kitchen. Apologies if I'm getting any of these names right. Stand up, play for Kiel. Um, well, as, as with staffs, uh, there's not really a stand up player, or you just want to, as a team, just play collectively, play well as collectively as a team, basically. Um, but you want all your, all your players playing at a high level. It's a fierce rivalry, like we said. And like I, like I said in my, in my first comments, goals, goals, goals. That's yeah. what we want. Goals, goals, goals. That's what we want in this game. Make it exciting. We have pe fans and family and friends out here. They want to see a performance from every single one of the players. It is quite a nice turnout, actually. American football yesterday, Keel didn't have that many players turn up. I know the staff's players, were, uh, the crowd was chanting the famous varsity mm -hmm. staff's chants. 
but there wasn't enough keel support there to fire any back. Tonight we might see a bit of crowd interaction as well. Yeah, I think so. We've got um, a few staffs, uh, students come over here on the stand just behind the camera here, and obviously I would like to think that there's a mix, but I think with the, you mentioned the American football there, there is a lot of bravado and banter going between the sides, but more so the teams as well. It's a big, fiery atmosphere within American football, and football is no, nonetheless the same. It's fiery, but it's a friendly, fiery atmosphere. Isn't it? There's no hard feelings, really, is there? I don't think so. They would like to put it in some of the lyrics. That it's a bit yeah. hard feelings, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it means a lot, as I was saying before. It's their Super Bowl. It's their World Cup. So yeah. on the pitch itself, there'll be a few tackles going in, I would like to think, but we are all wanting those goals. Uh, the Keel players are just coming out uh, as uh, we speak, so uh, we're going to be handing over to your commentary team very, very soon. You can tell the Keel lot of, uh, are on the pitch. Uh, the fans are getting quite excited uh, this evening for this game. I think before the game, I think Keel are the favourites, aren't they, going into this? Definitely Keel are the favourites. Uh, we look at the past four years, um, staff weren't able, able to score any goals really, so we want to get staffs definitely scoring goals. But obviously, we want to break, want to break, want to break kill down. Want to show them that we're staffs. We can actually get something out of this game and make it a fifth year and actually just break those, break that deadlock and just go on and to, let's achieve something tonight. And of course, if staffs win, they go in front in varsity. 2-1, uh, obviously the men's rugby, as we've mentioned before, has been uh, postponed or cancelled uh, due to uh, lack of players. So it is 1-1 uh, after yesterday, so staffs could go in to Tuesday with the women's rugby tomorrow. 2-1 um, up, which will give a great boost to the rest of the team, doesn't it? I think so. I think for both teams today, they are really looking to get the one up now. It's early on. We've had This is the second big fixture of the week, and obviously heading into tomorrow, that's going to be a big boost for the women's team, for either teams, knowing that they will have the lead. They have the one up on the opposite uni. And obviously Wednesday, we've got a big lot of games. So it's all to play for still on that Wednesday, but it's going to be a very fierce affair. Yeah, so as I mentioned, tomorrow we've got the women's rugby. Uh, we are starting our show at a quarter past five. Kickoff yeah. is at half past five. That's uh, just next door, literally, uh, at Newcastle Rugby Club. Uh, and then on Wednesday, we've got a whole host of, of fixtures, uh, including badminton, basketball, volleyball, men's and women's. Uh, we've got netball, we've got uh, ultimate frisbee, and a lot, lot more. Obviously, football and rugby. What are you most looking forward to on Wednesday? I think for Wednesday, um, the futsal is going to be a personal favourite, but one yeah. of the standout ones for me is the frisbee itself. It's one of those things that you don't necessarily see in terms of the Olympics or big national sports, but for me, in terms of the universities, it's very competitive and it's, it's a rising sport, so that one's going to be one to watch for myself. Uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, de def definitely the frisbee as well. So new sport. I'm, 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 I'm just going to frisbee to be fair because of our mate Matt. Um, so I wanted to definitely see something new, something different, and something exciting. Uh, the teams are in the tunnel, so we are moments away from kickoff. We'll hand over to our commentary team of Matt Bates, Joe Ellis, and Dan. Thanks guys, you can play a dozen games in the season, but varsity will always be on the back of your mind. Tonight, there is a lot more than just 12 months of bragging rights at stake tonight. For some, it's a chance to make their first mark, while others, it's an opportunity to leave uni with a legacy. But for a few, it could turn out into a nightmare. Welcome everybody, it is Staffs versus Kiel. I'm your commentator, Matt, and I am joined beside me with Joe and Dan. Boys, are you looking forward to the game tonight? Absolutely. It's going to be thrilling as the teams are shaking hands in front of us now as we stand on this velodrome that surrounds the pitch. Dan, how are you feeling ahead of your first varsity? Quite nervous now, actually. I can see the Kiel, uh, Kiel have brought the big support with them. Um, I think, hopefully, some of them are Staffs. If not, Kiel have brought a ton. They, they've bought so many supporters. Um, love to see a few more staff fans coming over. Hopefully they can make the, make some noise. How little of them there are. They're piling in, aren't they? They're piling in ever so slowly. Um, we do have team lineups. I'm sure the boys have gone through them already. Uh, but in goal for staffs at the moment we have Cadman. Um, right back would have Kulf. 
Then Josh Kerr is a captain. Uh, he'll be starting in centre half alongside Alvaro Gonzalez. Then George Woodruff is on the left back. Um, in the middle, we'll have Tyler Sims and Mackenzie Faulkner. Um, Chupi as well and Capewell will be on the right wing. Chris Smith on the opposite flank. And Christoph will uh, start up front. And uh, we haven't actually had a confirmation of the starting 11 for Kiel yet. However, we'll be able to give you that a few minutes into the uh, first half once the game has kicked off. But there's an atmosphere building here tonight. It's a lovely night for it, not too cold. Uh, I might even have to take my coat off soon because I'm getting slightly warm as well. It's quite a warm night, it isn't is. it? It wasn't supposed to be this warm. I think no, on the forecast it said it was maybe a touch of rain. Obviously, Hopefully compared to not. last year, I hear last year was the most, the coldest day that anyone's ever experienced from what I've heard from other people involved from yes, last year. Yesterday was pretty cold, last I must year, be honest. Last yesterday year was, was unbelievable. I had five layers on last year and it was it was freezing. Uh, and that one finished 1-0 to Kiel, of course. Christoph for Staffs had a goal disallowed. Had that been scored, we would not be looking at a record of four, well, possibly, if we don't score tonight, five games without a goal for Staffs in varsity. I think it is Christoph that was a Newcastle Town player, or still is. Yes. So he is playing on home turf tonight. Yes, uh, I've, se I've seen him in there. There's a poster of him actually around the ground. There's um, <laughs> of, really? of, of him in, a, in the team, yes. Uh, we've got a Bit few... of a poster boy around here then. <laughs> yeah. Actually, there has been a change in the lineup because Nick Gray has come in for Staffs and he will go into uh, midfield by the looks of it. Mackenzie Faulkner is one to keep an eye on today. He's number 10 for Staffs. He's currently the captain of Hanley Town, playing semi-professionally. However, Staffs themselves, he hasn't had in many games for, um, for the uni side because he's been restricted by, by Hanley Town. Basically, they said that you're not allowed to play many games. Anyway, because of his commitments there, we're just about to get underway. Um, so it should be a really entertaining game today. I will point out before we start that it appears that only two floodlights are working, maybe three. The one uh, to the right of us as we stand has not turned on. So hopefully it doesn't get too dark before the end of play. <laughs> and we are, of course, underway. Kiel have kicked off and they're kicking from right to left. And the ball is played forward. Right. Well, Staffs will shepherd that out of play. And it's gone out for a throw-in, which George Woodruff will take. We'll just see how these two teams settle into this first half. Uh, Kiel already pressing very high. Very high, yeah. They've certainly decided to get ground. Um, and you can see there the, the line of the centre half is almost on the halfway line. They're really trying to squeeze Staffs into their own half. Of course, Staffs haven't, as I said, haven't scored in all, uh, in f the last four varsities. I'm not, I'm not sure it's a great idea with the pace of Christoph. He's playing alone up front, if I'm correct. Yes. It looks like he's a very pace lad, and he is a pace lad as well. Gray looked to almost get in there, but he was stopped by the Kiel defender, and that's a fantastic challenge. We love a 50 50. That's by, a big 50 uh, 50. By Sam Kulf on Willis, uh, the number 11 for Kiel. It's good to get one of them in early. A 50 50. You've won it. Both players fully committed. Uh, Staffs have won the throw in. That's Stamp your ground on the game. It's the kind of varsity derby that we want, isn't it, really? as the ball is thrown in and Josh Kerr, captain, comes to dominate. He's heads it off and Christoph has beaten the skill set at half and takes it down. It's gone Judge. to Chris Smith who boxes it. It's not cleared. Nick Gray will take possession. He chips it to Christoph. We can't get a shot away. That's Mackenzie in the box and it's cleared somehow by Kiel and they, come, survive. Out. they come away with the ball. It was a really good early chance there. Uh, Christoph could have had a shot himself. He decided to lay it off down at the outside. A poor clearance. Now Kiel on the counter-attack now. But Josh Kerr, well. It's very Josh, soft foul, very isn't it? Very soft, isn't very it? Very soft foul. Kiel, Kiel would say that was all theirs, but the staff slot behind me here um, certainly disagree with the decision, and so did Josh Kerr himself, as Kiel have a very promising free kick early in early doors. It's a good chance to test the keeper, this. Uh, just, to the, just to the right of the penalty area. Uh, looking to put this on top of his head, get a big man attacking it from the back. Must it's point out the Staffs fans have began to pack into this uh, single tier. I don't want to say single tier stand. I've been saying that too much because of Tottenham. Eddie Rand whips the ball in and it's come out. It's a goal kick headed over by Hijazi, the striker for Kiel to this, uh, this 
evening. We've already had some, some I would say, friendly banter between Keel and staff's fans. The chanting's getting going early. I imagine it will turn ugly later, Unlike later on last today. last year, actually, there's quite a big distance between um, Keel and staff's fans. Obviously, last year it was at the Keel ground, and there was a fantastic compact atmosphere. Um, but this is an interesting environment here, and I think it might benefit the teams in a way, as Gonzalez as uh, will be called clear and Keel. It's oh, basically it's been pinball at the moment. And it's almost Ooh. Nick Gray almost gets in contact with that, but Kate Ball will take it on the right wing. He'll try and jinx around, and it's fallen back in the middle to Tyler Sims, and Gray escapes down the right. He'll try and box it, but it's just snubbed. There's chances just snubbed, and Keel will look to come away with the ball and clear. Willis' is try is sent through, but he can't make it, and Alvaro Gonzalez will clear up and give the throw into Colt. Now, Gonzalez has been described by Captain Josh Kerr as, he's a Spanish, by the way, as you, you can't tell by the name, and he's been described as a little Sergio Ramos. Uh, so we're looking for I some I believe he's filled in for the second team this season as well. I've, I've, I've seen him before for the second team, but he definitely looks... You, you can see there, well, just getting up. Yeah, uh, well adapted to the uh, first team, definitely. Okay. He is certainly little. That may hinder him against some of the big centre-halves of Keel, uh, especially number 17. Well, I haven't got his name. Uh, Adonis. Jones. Number 17. Oh, no, sorry. Adonis Adon at centre-half for, for Keel. And the staffs are just starting to rank up their uh, volume here behind us as staffs look to come up and put some pressure on Keel. There's been no clear-cut chances as yet. I'd say that chance in the box earlier was more of a half chance as Chris Smith gains possession on the left wing. That's pulled back to Woodruff, who beats his marker, gets to the byline, puts the ball in. It's come to Nick Gray, but he can't get a right contact on it. Cape well will clear up. He puts it back in, and it's floating, and it's over the bar. That was a chance there. Had Nick Gray managed to get his right contact, that could have been in. Gray and Christoph are definitely causing the Keel defence problems already. You can see their pace and power on the ball. Well, definitely Christoph more Gray's pace, um, definitely causing problems for the Yeah, Keel I don't defense. think I don't think Gray is particularly used to heading the ball much. Maybe you know he's a very probably the smallest player on the pitch, for what I can see. So he's maybe excuse him for missing that. He's early definitely chance. getting himself about though. <laughs> but he looks Heard really about. Uh, playing off of Christoph. He looks really really useful. Uh, as Christoph will chase that, and it's cleared by the Keel keeper, Murphy. And it's gone out for a throw-in to Keel on the right side in front of their own fans. Yeah, Josh Kerr once again winning everything in the air so far. Looking very commanding at the back and controlling that defence nicely. I think Keel need to settle into their game a little bit. Um, at the moment, they're rushing the ball forward. Long balls like this, for example. It's a great ball, but well dealt with. Yeah, it feels like staff will be able to do with them all day as the seat can't seem to get the ball down. Kerr will clear. There was a slight nudge on Chris Smith there, but Kerr comes in again and it's headed wayward, but Colf will mop up the danger as Kiel, no one can seem to get the ball down. That's um, the staff Sergio Ramos going up again. It's Guizford who is in the thick of the action at the moment Great tackle. and that's a fantastic challenge Great tackle. by Woodruff there on the left wing to stop the cross yeah. as <laughs> Keel looks to ramp up the pressure really. It's always going to be a cagey start to this sort of game. It's the game that everybody looks forward to on both sides of the rivalry and it's then first five or ten minutes just to settle down that's why it's maybe a little bit in the air at the moment as Keel look to come up, look to capitalise counter attack could be on here Oh, that's it's a, a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant challenge. challenge. Smith. The keeper, the Keel keeper has come way out there. Um, Murphy obviously got a call by his defender, but came out and, well, had that gone to a staff's player, that could have been a massive chance. Another three has got to be careful there, <laughs> kicking the ball away. As Colf takes this throw in to Sims, uh, who hasn't played very much for the staff's first team this season, despite being one of the key players, as Kerr will look to mop up this 
uh, chance, but there's a foul on the centre half. And despite Lil Keel's celebrations in the other end, with the referee did blow his whistle way yeah. before. There's a clear nudge in the foul. back. Clear nudge in the back. Um, I think it's the. I think number 22 Keel is doing the right thing. He's letting himself know that he's there. Let, letting um, the uh, staff's defence know that he's there. And, um, it'll be an interesting battle to see. Christoph has been sent down the right wing. He will look to box it, but the, the chance is snubbed. However, he's still got possession. Surely staffs would try and take a corner here, but it's been cleared away. And Kolf gets up to win that against Willis. He'll shoot it out and put it straight back into the middle. Um, but Gray, unfortunately, has been beaten to it by Tomlins, the Keel captain. Keel will look to break, but Woodruff has got men behind him and he does very well under pressure to clear the ball away. Um, and Staffs can now reset and try and defend some, some fantastic Keel possession at the moment. Yeah, I think Wood, Woodruff, uh, yeah. uh, left back there, could, could have dealt with it earlier. He put himself under pressure by trying to turn out of that and the two Keel players that chased him down forced him into a mistake. Throwing on the far side for Keel. That's come out to Pew Jones, who clears high. However, Josh Kerr will mop up the third year, playing in his third varsity. That is a mistake by what well, almost looks to be a mistake by the left back there for Keel, but the keeper managed Great to read it. Great distribution. As Kate Bell looks to escape, same bit of afters as well. But definitely has to watch himself now. I think that he's made, uh, he's caught the attention of the referee. It's twice now he's uh, let his head go a little bit. Yeah, he's Mobby definitely got watch like he's getting, The occasion's getting to his head a little bit as uh, Tyler Sims will look to take this free kick. Um, there's some, there's a fair to say, there's some height in the middle of the park actually. And Josh Kerr's gone up. The Katie very powerful has gone up. Yeah. Christoph uh, is on the front of the line there on the edge of the box and Chris Smith lurking on the back. As Tyler Sims will whip it in. It's towards it's dangerous. Kerr. Keeper pounces offside and anyway. Christoph is an offside. Was there an offside? Yes. Yeah, offside, offside, offside from the free kick. Yeah. Yeah, couldn't see it there. <laughs> I will say I've noticed so far in this game the goalkeeper's kicks for, uh, for Keel. They're not going very far. They're not going very high. Uh, he's decided to play this one short. And that's, that's something that Stas can definitely capitalise on later in the game. However, when they get possession in their third... Great pressure from McKenzie. They seem to just want to hoof it forward, and that's the way they try and beat Staff. So whether Kerr and Gonzalez seem to be equal to everything else. As Keel will try and spray the ball about between their back line, trying to work some sort of situation. Uh, I've just been told today's referee is actually a championship standard referee. His referee games in the championship this wow. season. He's going to need it. Yeah. As Gonzalez comes away with possession, he'll look to spray it out to Chris Smith, but that's well dealt with by the keel right back. And Pew Jones will watch that to his keeper. Keel working it up into the midfield. Nick Gray trying to dispossess. Oh, the Burt oh, late challenge. challenge. Very late challenge. Yeah. Burt's on the floor now. Uh, that was a that was a challenge and a half there by Cole. It was another committed challenge. Obviously, one of 50 50 in the first minute. Uh, he tried to win another one there, but. Uh, Looks like there's a booking coming Colf's way early in this first half. Do you think that's deserved? It's, it's very early for a yellow card. It's one of them where later in the game it's a definite yellow, but with the calibre of this game for the players, certainly. It's quite a reckless maybe a talking, challenge, isn't it? Though, a talking to, to be first. making quite early. Um, probably not. Oh, I don't think it warrants a yellow card this early in the game. And the man he uh, tackled, but number three, is definitely made Ram poor challenge Ram as well. Ram whips it in, keeper comes out. Ooh. He's he's taken out there. There was a lot of pressure was underneath it? him. He uh, completed the flip there. Complete, <laughs> yeah, almost completed the flip. Landed almost on his head. Now, he'll, he'll be used to the contact because he played for the um, Ben Cadman, the goalkeeper. He played for the American football team yesterday. And he's American, and they of course they won yesterday, 25-9. I think the score was. Doesn't quite have the same protection though. No, unfortunately not. No. <laughs> but tonight, I think he'll need it, especially in this game, if they if the Keel are going to try and put that the keeper under so much pressure. It's already looking very feisty. Hopefully, though, Cameron will be able to bring that willing for, winning formula that they 
mustered last last well last night as Keel looks to come away with it but oh sorry now they will as a bit of a misplaced pass there to be fair and was Woodruff will take the throw on the far side it won't be what the captain's looking for there uh, Tomlin's it was a poor touch so he should have I think he tried to play it down the line uh, Christoph will try to escape down the left but Adinayu will come uh, to close him down and there's another throw in but it's taken early to Smith Christoph he turns his man oh, the ball's gone out on the far side to throw in to to the defenders aren't liking Christoph's pace right now No, he's given them plenty of problems and if staffs continue to give the ball into him into feet definitely he can cause more problems and potentially get a goal <laughs> It's difficult. It's not just Christoph and his pace you've got to worry about. Nick Gray as well, pushing in from midfield. He's got even more pace, I'd argue, than, than Christoph. That's two players I've got to look out for. Mosley in the middle will try and loft it's it over. It's a great through ball. And Kang Gonzalez catch him, but it's a fantastic save by the keeper in the end. Uh, the Keel man on the slide tried to, well, find the bottom corner, but Keel fans appealing equal for a to penalty. It. Um, but it's a poor it was definitely a slip. But he's got the ball again. He sent it through to number five. And it's a, it's a goal. One nil to kill. Looks as though, well, the Kiel fans over there will be uh, celebrating like crazy. It looks as though Eddie Rand put the through ball in, but we can't need to confirm who the scorer is. We're thinking it was Joe Geisford. And that's unlucky for Staffs, who had arguably the better chances up until the last few minutes. It's a really well-worked goal, though, from Kiel, it must be said. Um, Arthur, a chance has just gone banging. Um, they won the ball back around about the mid middle of uh, Staffs' own half and um, pressed and sent for a great ball. And it's a brilliant finish, to be fair, at the end. Yeah, definitely against the run of play. Uh, I think Staffs have had the better of the ball, the better chances before that chance came about. Well, that's football for you. Mackenzie sprays it forward, uh, sprays it to Woodruff on the left. And he has to drop back with possession, looking for a pass out. It's Smith, who's the outlet. And Christoph will make Christoph a is through. Run. He's through. He get it around the keeper. He's but through. Anunayi will clear up. That was a great chance. And I don't think Christoph could have done much more with that, but the pace of the centre half managed to. Well, it's another scare for the Kiel defenders. They have switched. They switched it off straight after they scored, and Christoph almost punished them. Almost. Almost. It's a matter of inches again, isn't it? Where. Uh, it had that maybe gone round the other side of the keeper, it would have a better chance. Would you argue he would that he should have um, chipped it from there, considering the there bounce? Was a, there was a big chance, including, yeah, yeah with the bounce. And the keeper was out of goal. As Burt will look to muscle the ball out, but Sims collects, and he looks to whip it into the boards of back it's post. It's a great ball. It's a great ball. He can't get there, and there's a hand in there. Smith, it did look um, like it was a hand. Yeah, Smith, the judge, to lift his hands up, and um, rather than chesting the ball, it's he's more manhandled it. Smith, of course, playing in his third and final varsity, the only other player to do that tonight uh, is Josh Kerr, the captain himself. Um, Smith has been president of the club for a while now. Him and Kerr are the two players who are in the committee and have kind of been running the club in recent years. I'm going to Kill the manager tried a fancy touch there, didn't quite come off. <laughs> Maybe he should stick to the managerial part, eh? But again, it was another poor kick by the keeper, who's put under pressure right now. Christoph will chase, but... Well, that's... It's been an interesting game so far. Very, op very open, but... It's almost end-to-end. -end. Yeah, it is, yeah. But then again, I never really expect anything else, considering its vastity, as Kerr heads it out for a throw-in, uh, and it's Guysford who will shepherd it out of play and then take the throw-in. Good head by Woodruff. Gonzalez clears, gets a boot to it. Christoph will chase. That's well dealt with by the Kiel centre-half. As they Christoph look to perhaps waiting for a um, bad touch from the defender. Didn't come. I think so. You can't bank on them at this level as Nick Gray will gain possession. It's Faulkner. 
but that, that's Bert that comes in there, slides the ball away, um, who Capewell just didn't go to the ball, which really should be attacking. And there's an offside flag up there on Gray, as Keel will look to use this opportunity to settle down and well put the ball back up into the staff's end. Yeah, he got his, a few full-blooded challenges already today, and I suspect, suspect the second half we'll see a lot more full-blooded challenges. Maybe even some actual blood. You never know. <laughs> well, we won't want to wish it. No, of course not. I think That's staffs would take the game in the air better than Kiel, especially in the defence. Um, but when it comes to the attack, they need to bring it down and start playing football on the ground. Because of, um, Christoph doesn't look like he's <laughs> going to win the header. He's not exactly a target man, is he? No, um, you need to get it on the ground and use the pace that Christoph and Gray possess to be able to beat the Pew Jones and Akinai in the centre-half positions. Um, but again, the full-backs even look quite comfortable at the moment for Kiel. Uh, staffs, they look to... The best chance has come from down the wing, where they've crossed it in as well, but that's, it's, it's come from down the wing because they've worked the ball on the floor. As Kiel will look to go uh, and attack, but that's another fantastic challenge by Smith on the far side as it goes out for a Kiel throw-in. should say if they are going to play it in the air. If they are going to play it in the air, they've got to play it in behind because the one thing defenders don't like is running towards their own goal. and if the, Especially if you've got some, someone with the pace of Christoph running behind you. But then the two Kiel centre-halves have positioned themselves in such a way that Christoph can't, can barely get past them. As that's Ran who will try and work himself an opportunity to cross the ball. It's too... Shouts for a handball there from Kiel. It was too close, wasn't it? As Staff will look to clear, but there's no outlet with every man behind the ball apart from Christoph. However, Kolf will clear that up and he will look to play Christoph. Very good reception from Burt. Good sliding challenge there. <laughs> Faulkner, the handy, count, handy town captain. There's uh, quite a lot of jeers and cheers going on behind me as well. And it's cleared there by Pew Jones, but Faulkner will get underneath it. Nick Gray gets a challenge in. Late foul, it's a vantage. Can Christoph get a shot away? He can, and it's always rising. Just brought over back the bar. for the free kick. Brought back for free kick, as you said. The yellow's being brought out again. This is a fantastic chance here for Staffs. Perhaps, who are we looking at? Maybe Smith or Faulkner to whip it into the top corner. We Pew Jones. I think we need a left footer. Pew Jones with the yellow card. Like, yeah. Only two yellows being handed out. It's still Ooh. early in the game for two yellow cards. Yeah, you very, very early. Get... Even in the professional game. Even in a rival, or even in a professional rivalry, a bit early. Oh, it's a, I thought it was a free kick, but it turns out it's a corner. A deflection yeah. on Christoph's shot. <laughs> well, I guess he played advantage and then, yeah. As it looks like Sims will go across to take it. Smith is lurking on the outside of the box. But there's a crowded penalty area. It's whipped in. And it's oh. just, just it flashes past the face of the goal. Uh, Kerr was coming in there like a steam train. Kerr, of course, hasn't scored this season, even though he banked five uh, last season. So... Five in ten, actually, which I think is very impressive for a centre-half. It was a great delivery by Sims, and any kind of touch on that, I think it's going in. He said, yeah. They're calling Alvaro Gonzalez the staff Sergio Ramos. Doesn't know, I don't know what that makes Kerr. Five goals in ten games is Sergio Ramos-esque. <laughs> That's balls on the far side, but Kerr himself will go and clear up. And it's a little bit of pinball in the middle of the area. But Sims puts in a, well, a bit of an unfair challenge there on Ran. <laughs> Kerr himself is a Liverpool fan, and I'm sure maybe we should compare him with Virgil van Dijk, maybe. <laughs> maybe. He's not donning the ponytail I'd, I'd hoped for. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you're going to be no. compared to him. Staff's fans getting a lot louder after that opportunity. Josh Kerr said himself to me, that he was saving himself over the season to score in the varsity as the ball is played forward. But that's McKenzie heads Great away. Great play from Smith. Smith Great ball clear. as well. Christoph couldn't control it as Kiel will play it back all the way to the keeper and look to deal with it. That's great pressure by Christoph. It's good another 50-50 there. It's good to see and it looks as though we might go back to a free kick for Kiel. <laughs> 
He has given a goal kick, I think. But he's hobbling a bit sure. for Keel. The Keel left yeah. back. He's, um, he's to be fair, he's been involved in a few hefty challenges, especially from Colf and now from Faulkner. I think he's been, not, I don't want to say targeted by the staff's boys, but there's been a few 50-50s already involving Bert. And um, he is definitely hobbling a bit. Hopefully he can continue for Keel's sake. He's definitely getting stuck into it. And Keel, Staffs will clear the ball away there, but Keel's still in possession. Gonzalez has to watch this out, and he, well, maybe he could have passed back to his keeper, but he clears high, and it goes essentially nowhere, back to Keel's possession. And it's gone out for throw-in to Keel on this far side. Fortunately, Staffs have everyone behind the ball at the moment, apart from Christoph. He's looking very isolated at the moment, Christoph. He needs He's always against the two centre halves of, of Keel. Maybe they Graves are both push very up close bit. to him right now. Ran on this far side, plays it in the middle to Ajazi. There's a shot and it's, and it's saved well by Cadman there. Held onto it well. Very powerful that shot. It was. Definitely stung the fingertips by the captain, Ollie Tomlins, for Keel. Ben Cadman must be good to have an entire building named after him at Staffordshire University. <laughs> good point, actually. Very good point. Yeah, he must be very good. Well, clearly being playing multi sports for American football and football um, does earn you some sort of right in the university. <laughs> Goes out for a kill throw in on the far side. That's game has begun to kind of die down since it's quite chaotic start. Both yeah. teams beginning now to play scrappy football. I can certainly see it uh, going that way again though, very, very soon, if not towards the end of the game. As Christoph looks to try and shrug off Hugh Jones. High boot there from Christoph, I think. I think it was high because Ijazi, Ijazi is a very tall guy and to get your boot that high, it must be uh, unfair play as the kill keeper will look to spray it out to this near side, but that's Colf there who takes the touch and can't keep it under control. And it's a kill throw in. Is anyone else wishing they brought their gloves holding these microphones? It's getting cold, isn't it now? It is beginning oh, to get cold. Yeah. You said it was a nice, it was a good night for football at the yes. start, but I'll tell you what, now my hands are getting. As soon down. as the sun goes down, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, we have been here most of the afternoon, well, me and Dan have, and it's been sun, we've been sunbathing on the velodrome here. <laughs> but not, not anymore. Sims heads that towards Christoph, who that's dealt with by Keel. Uh, Sims again, who seems to be in possession. That's a fantastic Another. challenge there by Smith. Certainly leaving everything out on the pitch in his last ever varsity. Tomlin for Keel wraps up, well, tried to find Graysford on the, on the right-hand flank there. Staff's boxed them in well there. They need to do that a bit more in the final third. Really stop the outlet, essentially. Yeah. Sims makes a darting run to the byline. He takes it down. Can Staff's get a cross in? It's come to Smith. They do get a cross in. It's, it's headed in, but Keel somehow, somehow clear it away. That was Capewell with the header. As Keel looked to break, but Colf will be there, and he'll clear it down the line to Capewell again. There's a good chance there. Unfortunately, the, um, the right winger could not get the right connection on the ball. No, it's Brandy's another, it's another chance that we haven't been able to have a shot actually and test the keeper no, yet. True. We're getting close, but we haven't been able to, to really test the keeper yet. Apparently, he's a very hit and miss player, Cape Ball. Sometimes he'll have an absolute stormer, but other times he'll, he won't play very well at all. And hopefully, he has a stormer tonight. Burt with a throw in on this near side. Staffs haven't stopped singing in the last five or ten minutes. Certainly louder than the kill guys. It's you great, great sport. Might be because we're closer. Though. Maybe, well, yeah. <laughs> late challenge from Alvaro Gonzalez there. I think the ref has already played the advantage. Oh, Josh Kerr clears, but Pew Jones puts it back into the mixer. Kerr will touch it down to Woodruff. There's a lot of clearances going on, not a lot of get the ball down and play, and I think maybe that's what the team who wins it, if the team that wins it will be able to do that very well towards the second half. They need someone needs to grab control of this game by both hands, because at the moment it's still very 
very open. I wouldn't say there's a better side or a worse side at the moment. McKenzie kicks the ball straight into his his heel counterpart's face. Uh, but, but unlike don't the, think you meant it. No, unlike in the Premier League, though, the Kiel man is straight back up. And that goes your ever chances of ever working with the Premier League. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good point. Good Throws it in. Cole say there is kicks it. one set of fans that is louder than the other. I'm not going to say who. Willis beats Gonzalez down the wing. He's on the byline. We'll have to put a cross in, but he runs the ball out of play. Couldn't fasten the chance to square it. No. Uh, we had what with bodies in the middle. <coughs> and now we'll go out as a goal kick. He did a little bit too much there. He, he got past Gonzalez down the side. That's when he needed to deliver it. He tried taking on Sims as well and ran that ball out of play. Sims and Faulkner in the middle, bellowing orders uh, as Ian Cranston looks on from the touchline. Big header there by Mosley in the middle of the park. Another key, another staff to throw in. Anything that you might think would need changing from staffs? I think in, um, in this game? the midfield needs to press up a little bit further. Um, we can see our centre midfielder and suppose his kill of Chuck's counter-attack has um, died down a little bit. Um, uh, the staff centre midfielders are kind of just dropping <laughs> just behind the centre circle in their own half and not proceeding further than the, cent further than the halfway line. I think um, the midfield needs to get closer to players like Gray and Christoph because they're not getting the service at the minute. Yeah, we have mentioned they are fairly isolated. Christoph especially is fairly isolated up front. As you see there, a challenge against the centre half, he just couldn't, he's not strong enough to win that. Faulkner plays it down to Capewell. Staff's trying to move him to possession. And there's a free kick there in the middle of the park. Mostly there fouling Colf. And it's Tyler Sims who will stand over the ball and look to whip it in. Kerr as Ad Gonzalez. I was about to say, it'd be a great shot, great opportunity to get the ball into the dangerous area. We know Kerr can score. Capewell is free on this right-hand side as well. Plenty of bodies forward. Gonzalez has just made his way forward. Sims. Oh, he's gone for it. He's gone for it. Oh, it's so close. Just at the last moment, it swerved away. It looked destined for the top corner, but the last vote is swerved away. It'd be good to see that again, actually, from a, from possibly from a different angle, because, yeah, the ball just swerved there. I mean, it was going on target. He, he struck that so sweetly as well. Took everybody by surprise. I thought he would pop it under the nose of the keeper, but no, went straight for the game. It's a long gap. ball over. And the keeper, Beck Hadman, has to come out, and it's really well done. The shouts for handball by um, the Kiel fans. That was Hijazi who escaped there. And <laughs> prompting chance of USA from the staff's fans as Christoph goes up the other end. He's on the byline. He'll tr he can whip it. Can he whip it in? He's closed down. Should have whipped it in earlier, I think. Got 15 minutes left of the half. Looking like staffs are. Looking like staffs are the more likely team to score right now. Kiel, very dangerous on the counter attack, though. Christoph gets the ball on the edge, in the edge of the area. And he plays it out to Mackenzie. It's whipped in by Woodruff, but Capewell can't stretch enough to get a contact with the ball and put it on target. Again, we haven't really tested the key keeper as yet. Well, from the last goal kick, Stas fell asleep and had a bit, what was his name? The number 17, Adonai. Uh, he's received the ball on the short twice and that resulted in Cadman's good good little bit of play outside his box earlier. They're not going to do it this time. There's been a few occasions now where Cape Boyle has found himself pretty much unmarked at the back post just with a better ball to, into him. Good header by Kerr. Christoph lays it off and Kurt J Gray will run onto it. Burt will try and shepherd it out for goal kick it's and he great play from Burt. Very well done. He's getting himself stuck in today, isn't he? 
He's definitely switched on since the first few minutes, definitely. Yeah. Didn't have the greatest of the first few minutes, of course. No. You um, but you he's mentioned definitely Cape Wells' height at the, at the back post, and he's unmarked as well. He's If a ball comes in onto Cape Wells' head, I can't see Burt managing to beat him in the air. No, 100%. That is Maybe that's the outlet, and that's where the goals have come from. I would also bank on Smith. We've had a good cross in from Colf as well, where um, Smith handballed it in that chance, but could have put the ball on target. So I think the wings are the outlet as Smith Sims will play it forward down the flank. Christoph will chase and put the keeper under pressure, who's out of side of his area. Burt will finally clear for Keel to Ran, who's in the centre of the park. He plays it to Geisford down the wing, but there's a Integral stop there by George Woodruff on the left flank. He puts it out for throwing. That could have sent the kill winger down the, down the flank and almost uh, for a fantastic opportunity. Staff's midfield caught nothing there as um, Kiel cleared the ball. The Kiel attacking midfielders were first to it, as they have been on a few occasions to start off these counter attacks. The midfield definitely needs to switch on a little bit more um, to these Kiel clearances. Ball is thrown in. Kerr clears, but only to Chave in the middle. And it's oh, a, it's big a great header. header. Fantastic save to by Cadman, showing his uh, American football prowess there. Fantastic save. Willis getting up there to head the ball from around the penalty area, actually. Around the edge. It was a brilliant yeah. header. He got so much power on that. And that's an optimistic effort by Hijazi. That's well wide. I'll tell you something, that header from Willis, Ian Cranston, the staff's manager, would have been proud of that if he, uh, if he, was, if he did that when he's playing days. He scored a header in the cop end once upon a time in the, when he was playing for Stoke, one of the Stoke's highest capped players and pretty le big legend around these It's a great bit of trivia, that is. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit before <laughs> our time, certainly mine anyway. Play for Ipswich Town as well as that's a big header by Burt. Very accurate to Ran, but Sims comes across to put the ball towards the staff's, staff's fans over here, over on my left. You can see the football seconds up there actually getting involved as well. They've had a long day of drinking, according to <laughs> someone I know. Yeah. Since one o'clock <laughs> this afternoon, they've been, they've been on the booze. <laughs> well, it is varsity after all. It is the cup final of Staffs in Kiel, and as I said, it's it's that one game every year which you, you know you're going to have, and you know that you're going to be thinking about it for the entire year. Kiel coming away with it on the far side. It's Hijazi. great touch. It's just again, Jazzy, sorry, but it's great safe. Yeah, fantastic safe. Great safe. Cabman stretching to his near post there, left handed save there. Brand will slowly go up to take this corner. We would like to apologise if you can hear any offensive language. Yeah, hopefully we are far enough away that it doesn't come through too loud on our microphones. <laughs> Certainly bringing the atmosphere, Staffs, and I really expected nothing less. I don't think the boys on the pitch did either. Of course, Staffs do have some assets off the bench. Um, we've got Chupi, Volker. Gittins and Colour O'Hara, to name just a few, as Ran will look to whip this corner in. There's a lot of movement in the area. It's played at the front post, and it's cleared by Gonzalez. Burt puts it back in the mixer, and Staffs can't get it away. Ran will try and put a ball in, but that's gone out for a goal kick uh, to the relief of Staffs. Plays it quick. Woodruff. Sims. It's a great touch there from Sims to take it away from his marker and draw the foul. One of, uh, as I said, one of Staff's best players last year. Unfortunately, hasn't got enough game time. Christoph on the byline. That's good defending there. He's done, it out of play. Um, he's done extremely well to keep it in there and win a corner as well. Extremely well from what looked like a nothing ball. So staff's throwing in a well. I think it's corner. Is it a, I think it's corner. Oh, 
It looks like a corner, yay. We're looking at Capewell again at the back post, possibly, as Kerr goes up. But Gonzalez is told to stay back. He stays with Colf. It's headed in and it's cleared away by Keel. There was be a staff going on this near side. A bit of a wasted opportunity there. Kerr was making his way into the box, but Sims took the corner before he was in a position to attack it. And Gonzalez never came up. Uh, there was a bit of miscommunication, I think, between the staff's boys. <laughs> staff's just penning Keel into their own half at the moment in this uh, final phase in this first... 45 minutes. If Stamps were to score a goal now, it would make Ian Cranston's half time team talk a lot easier. But I still think there's room for change as Christoph looks to head it into the area, but there's nobody backing him up. And the keeper, Murphy, will come and collect the ball and clear for Keel. Kerr clears away again. Him and Gonzalez have been ever present in the back line and Christoph has been called pulled back for an offside <laughs> so half time verdicts what do you think uh, well, staff aren't keeping it on the, on the floor <laughs> enough are they um, when it gets to the defence it's usually a boot clear and occasionally Christoph has, been mani has managed to make something out of nothing um, but if they really want to trouble the Kiel defence they need to keep it on the ground <laughs> And relatively the same with Kiel. Um, I think staffs have won pretty much every header that came towards them. Um, the, well, the defence, at least. Um, Kiel haven't kept it on the ground enough. It's pre game has pretty much been played in the air at this point. Sort of what you expect from a, a game between two rival universities. It's not going to be the prettiest game of football you've ever seen. There will be games being played in the air for long periods. There'll be big challenges we've already seen. Ooh. Faulkner almost he dummies that it's cleared out there by Keel but Willis can't chase and it'll go out for throwing on this near side to Jeez from the staff to the end um, just, just behind them Sims looks to play it upfield but again Christoph looks a little bit isolated on the top in the front no one up there to chase this ball. Cape Ball maybe should be chasing, but it's cleared and high up in the air by Keel. Ran might bring it down. Instead, he plays a misplaced it's chance here. And it's Smith. Chance. Smith shoots from distance. Oh, oh what a goal! Chris Smith! What a goal! Unbelievable finish right into the Scots Unbelievable end. strike. Smith! The president of Stabs Uni runs into the crowd. There's fear flying everywhere. What an unbelievable Absolutely scenes. incredible. Fantastic finish. That was, I was, I was about to say, why is he winding up to shoot from there? And the keeper off his line. That was lost for words. So am I. The Stabs were looking for absolutely a bit of inspiration. I think they've just found it. That was absolutely incredible. I'm sure he's going to be glad to watch that on the camera later on. I tell, I tell you something. What a way to to mark, make your mark in your final varsity um, after Billy playing such a crucial role in the club's development um, from first year. Wow, absolutely stunning finish. It sat up, sat up perfectly for him. And he just hit it. And Murphy and the goal had. Uh, if you had, are, had no answer. If you're listening on the radio and you're not watching um, the coverage on YouTube. I'll just describe the goal to you. It's about 25, 30 yards out. It's a shot from the air, outside the area by Keel there. Sorry to interrupt you, Dan. Um, it's about 25, Kirk 30 is. yards out, and it's on the half bounce, and he's had a pop, and it's just dipped into the top corner. Was, Goalkeepers yeah. left in no man's that Absolutely incredible. Unbelievable. That, Absolute scream. That goal, no matter what the result here, that goal will go down in varsity history as one of, if not the best, ever scored. That is the first goal Vast of Staffs have scored in the last, well, in five games against Kiel. What a way to score it. Unbelievable, isn't it? If you're going to break your duck, do it in style. Yep. You certainly have. Now is the case of just holding out. 
for the first half, maybe adding the second. We've got two minutes left until the interval. Now that staffs have got the equaliser, I think it's a bit easier for us to say that they have definitely been the better team of the two. Sorry, we've, had, we've got four minutes left until the interval. Brilliant scenes here uh, in Newcastle. It's certainly what the game needed to give it another extra boost um, if it wasn't already feisty enough. Yeah, we said the Staffs fans have been loud. They'll be even louder after that. They're absolutely loving 100 it. 100%. Fantastic finish. And you can see, you saw the passion on uh, Smith's face there. It's the celebration as well. Yes. The celebration was incredible. There was some valuable student money being wasted as the beer flew in the air. <laughs> <laughs> the captain said, Kerr, before the game, um, left foot like Gareth Bale for Smith, and I can see why. As Keel looked to come away with the ball here in the middle of the centre park, centre of the park, but Sims tidies up really nicely. Oh, but he runs the ball out of play. Too many tricks. So Gareth Bale wishes he had a left foot like Chris Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you something, you're very right there. Here with the throw on the far side. It's a great idea from them. Great idea from Kiel. Kate Wallace has to mop up there. And it's a Kiel corner. Ran will go over and collect the ball off of the uh, velo side of the velodrome. You can see just the, all the plastic glasses that have just <laughs> thrown over. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an advantage to the velodrome round here is, of course, it's very banked. So when the ball does go up there, it just rolls back down to the side <laughs> of the pitch. That is the only advantage. <laughs> Ran signals to take this corner. Plenty of movement it's in the great box delivery. Again. That's Good a fantastic header there by Woodruff. And Tomlin <laughs> will look to put a ball in. He beats Kerr, but cannot beat Woodruff, who's been solid on that left flank for the entirety of the first half. Yeah. Again, you can look at the, the way staffs are lining up here. Christoph on the edge of the centre. The centre half line, time. that's half time. We'll pass you back over to our presenters now. So, well, 1-1, one, one, what a fantastic performance. Uh, Chris Smith, they're equalising for staffs, uh, well, very late on in the first half, but an absolute peach of a goal and it was Guisford who opened up the scoring for Kiel. Uh, but we'll hand over now to your presenters. One one at half time for the varsity twenty nineteen match. What an equaliser. Oh my god, from Chris Smith all the way from Oakham there. Amazing. He just come off the break and it just opened up for him perfectly. He just finished it all oh, unbelievable. I'm almost speechless how good that was. It took everyone by surprise, I think. It was very much Keel's game coming through from the, from the very start of the match. They did really well. It, it was a good start to the match, wasn't it, for Staff Steve? They, they really did attack and they had a couple of chances he just couldn't finish and then obviously they went down the other end Kiel did and scored that was a well taken goal as well let's let's not take it away from them it was just a frustrating half wasn't it for Staffs they, yeah. they had the ball and they couldn't get to the goal definitely definitely a frustrating half for the Staffs but also the way they were, was the way Staffs were playing was sort of a hoofball sort of thing Yeah. but that makes it a bit um, not entertaining to watch but also a good sort of tactic as well, because you could definitely tell Kiel had a game plan of just passing it around, trying to find 
a chance with a left or right, and they were definitely using the free ball quite well. Uh, that's how they got the, the first goal, to be fair. Yeah, it was Gisford, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, it was Gisford who, who got a goal. And um, I think that goal just actually changed everything. It changed the momentum of the game, and you really just say, you really just got a sense of, yeah, we've got a game now. Mm. No, I think for sure. I think realistically, Staffs have been digging in deep from the very offset, really. Killer, the one team who have been passing really well, and they were trying to get that counter, of course, but then it obviously opened up for Chris Smith, and what a fantastic finish it was. Their atmosphere is really building here at Newcastle. It's amazing. It, uh, as you say, it was it was the tooth ball. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but our centre-forward, the staff centre-forward, he looks very isolated, didn't he, in, in parts of that game? Yeah, he, very, he looks very, very isolated. Uh, there was no one running with him as well when he was making those runs there was no there was no midfielders trying to find him trying to find those little pockets and just getting him in those little channels um there was just no one behind him actually supporting him but also like like i said earlier the hoof ball sort of helped him in getting behind the behind the defenders and trying to get something on but he just he, he, as you said it was just it wasn't working for him i think that's why in the coming in the second half I think that a, a game tactic had definitely helped the centre forward, it had definitely helped the midfielders as well. Try and get that passing movement going on, try and get behind um, Kill's defence. We could def there's definitely more goals in this game. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree with Cletus there. I think uh, staffs are playing a 4 5 1 formation, and the centre forward is definitely isolated. I think the midfield really need to bring it a bit more forward, try and get their interlocking passing going, get those gears really rolling so that they can really bounce on from this half and try and combat what Kiel is still doing and then that's really good football. More of the same from Kiel then really, isn't it? that's what the manager will be telling them right now, won't it? more of the same lads and we can potentially win this game. Yeah for sure, I think Kiel as I said before, their passing has been top notch and they're really getting stuck in from both teams as well but I feel like me and Cletus were talking at half time and realistically the Kiel side are the ones who are communicating a bit more out there. They seem a little bit more disciplined. But for staffs, what they really want to do is really push on now and try and get on from that momentum that they just did, which is, in realistic terms, a bit of an upset coming into this into the half time. Yeah. Uh, go on, Cletus. Yeah, I was I was about to say um, you could look from the midfield. There was no one. There was no one uh, um, sort of running back. There was someone you know, doing that sort of hard work. That was like hard midfield work. Um, Definitely, you want to get a disciplined midfielder, dif disciplined midfield, so that they can get some sort of structure in that midfield, and also get some sort of structure between between the wings as well. The wings looked a bit rigid. There was no sort of end product, end product. So, definitely got to get all the players into the game, and definitely gets that 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 momentum going on. We we said before the game it was going to be a feisty affair. The tackles proved that. There was a few hefty ones in there, weren't For there? For sure, they've been firing in from the very off. I think it set the tone here today at Newcastle. Um, the refs had a, a lot to do. He's a championship re uh, yeah. referee, which is really good to obviously be involved here at Varsity 2019. But, um, yeah, he's had his work cut out a little bit. Luckily, there's no one being sent off. I think we really want to keep it that yeah. way. I think that's really important. But, um, yeah, a few guys really getting set the tone real straight there with a, some two-footed challenges as well. The the Kiel left back definitely felt as tackled yeah, down yeah, he that display that, that yeah, deserved he the yellow card. That. But he's also the passion of the game. Yeah. Mm. When you have the sort of rivalry and when you have that pa that passion for the for the sport really, it, it really gets you really gets you going. And we saw when Kiel f scored the first goal, they celebrated as if yeah we got it we, we got one up against you guys. Mm. Man. What can you do? It's like, I'm getting in your face. What can you do? But that goal just totally just took every sort yeah. of every sort of hope or sort of, it just puts on that mm. pressure and kill and just say, what can you do now? It yeah. flipped the momentum yeah, for sure. Yeah. And momentum. you mean, look at, you say passion, but the passion for Chris Smith as well. Absolutely saw and the whole team coming forward right into the stand just behind the camera here. Absolutely amazing. And the, the team effort, you can hear them going into there just saying, just team staffs and team yeah. kill. They're really building themselves up, which should be an amazing second half. You mentioned the crowd. They're a massive part of this, aren't mm. they? They G the team on. Obviously, it's a lot of their mates, their course mates uh, from from either university. Mm. You know, Keel. They've they've had a great turnout as well. They make varsity, don't they? The fans. It's not just the players on the pitch. Mm. It's the fans as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's a bit of there's a lot of going back and forth, and they're keeping loud, which is really good. There's quite a few here. I couldn't. I would say there's a good couple of hundred at least, and that's really good for a turnout for both students coming all the way to Newcastle here today. Yeah, definitely. The fans bring the game alive to be fair it gets the, gets the players going and it gets gets them as well get that momentum going and gets the morale up 
So going into the second half, as we say, more from Kiel, a few changes for, for staffs. How do you see this game going at half time? I would like to see um, a bit more staffs coming into their own a bit, taking the time on the ball, really just settling down and feeling a bit more disciplined a bit personally. Chilled out. Yeah, I, th I feel like, uh, as we were saying before, they're in very much, I feel they're a bit flustered from the off. They had an early goal keel. So, really, right now, what those t players really need to do is get their heads together in the dressing room and really just get together and start playing football. Start really going forward a bit more, goes, getting that tactics right and just really supporting the striker at this top of the field. Yeah, definitely what, what Joe said. More end product, more end product. Definitely, we saw the goal it took um, kill by breath. Uh, definitely, you want to see the midfielders working a bit more, getting those ball to the striker. You want to see the wingers coming into the game as well, getting more and more crosses, causing the uh, kill defense to be a bit back on their foot. Um, just cause some havoc, just cause some damage. Just. Just do something. We just want to see something be done. It was after after that goal. You could you could definitely tell they were a bit, a bit more hyped up, a bit more uh, um, geared up to really get in you know, and just get that momentum going on. I just want to take this opportunity as well. On our camera is Leo. He, he has done an amazing job of protecting his camera. He's, he's a standout ball boy at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I think I was we should get him that. a bib with ball boy on. Uh, he has, yeah, he has been a fantastic no. job of protecting his camera. Obviously, we don't want any kit broken. Yeah, uh, he's done a fantastic job of that. So uh, it's Varsity 2019, it's day two. Uh, we are at the men's football. We've got plenty of action uh, still to come for you on uh, Stas TV, OMG and on Cube as well. Tomorrow from, half past, uh, from quarter past five, we've got the women's rugby right next door. Uh, that's a half past five kickoff. So if you want to come along and uh, cheer the girls on, then you can do. And Wednesday, uh, back at Staffs, uh, the Sir Stanley Matthews Sports Centre. Name of sport. We've got it. It's going to be a great week, isn't it? It's going to be fantastic. Obviously, that Wednesday, we all know what's happening tomorrow with the yeah. women's rugby. That's going to be great. It's actually only across the, the field over there, which is going to be great. We're going to be back here at 5.30 p.m. for the kickoff. And then Wednesday, we have badminton. We've got hockey outside. We've got the frisbee outside as well. And then we've got futsal. And then we've got badminton, I believe, and basketball just to finish off the day. Yeah, it's just a great week for, for, for sport, really. Yeah. yeah. Keep, keeps everyone, keeps people talking as well. Isn't it? Everyone sure. on campus. Mm -hmm. Is talking. I don't know what it's like at Kiel. Mm. It's a massive event for, for both universities. Obviously, Kiel have the whole band in the, in the last few years, but a win for staff tonight could could boost that momentum. I think it would be fair to say it would be a bit of an upset as well, especially with uh, as we were talking about at the very start of the game. Last four games, Kiel have been the ones who have been taking victors here, and so for staff to come back, they'd be two one up in the varsity leaderboard as a total. So heading ahead towards the end of the week. For them to win this game would be massive for staffs. Obviously, if it is a draw, we're not too sure what's going to happen, if it's going to extra time or straight to penalties. I've been told it's going to go straight to penalties. Mm -hmm. We'll keep you up to date uh, of what is happening uh, surrounding that. So we could be here for another couple of hours, couldn't we? Are we expecting pitch invasions? <laughs> because they are GW crowd. It would be amazing scenes. It would be amazing scenes. So, as you can tell from the crowd, the staff team are coming out. They uh, look ready. They're the first out. That's always a good sign, isn't it? What's going on? Very well. So we've got you. an interview. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've got an interview. We didn't know about an interview. Some um, music here. We've got What's the gaffer said at half time? So we need to keep it going that like we did um, uh, obviously in the first half. We just need to keep the ball moving left and right, left and right, and obviously we'll get our rewards from that. Three frustrating moments in there, wasn't it? Yeah, you, you seemed a bit isolated up front at yeah, times. But it, it, you get like, it gets like that um, in the game sometimes. So uh, we just have to keep working hard. Everyone needs to get, uh, push together, and obviously we'll get our rewards from that. Can you win? Obviously, it's team staffs. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> All be be uh, best let you get out there and uh, prove that just you can win. Quick, quick, go. go on, Cyclist. What do you think about the goal? I'll go. Yeah. Oh, that was a super strike, wasn't it? Oh, I didn't. I couldn't believe it. I had to just do, join, uh, join in with the crowd, didn't we? So Amazing everything day. get another one. Yeah. But yeah, uh, good, good luck. Good luck for the second half. Yeah. Impromptu interview right here <laughs> on uh, Staff TV, OMG Radio, and Cube Radio as well. It's going to be an interesting second half. Uh, we're going to hand over to your commentary team very, very soon. Final thoughts from you at half time. Well, it's, I think the atmosphere, you can see it on its face. This means so much to absolutely everyone. And honestly, I can only say from a fan's perspective, from a presenter's perspective, this is amazing to be a part of. And we're looking forward to the second half for sure. Yeah, I mean, he looks relaxed. He looks happy. 
he looks like he's ready to go. So yeah. let's just kick on the second half. So we're going to hand over to your commentary team of Matt Bates, Dan Huggins and Joe Ellis for this second half. A varsity 2019, it's the men's football. Don't go anywhere. What a climax to that first half. I mean, if, they, if the first half is anything to go by, this second half is going to be absolutely incredible. Hopefully more of the same from Smith. I mean, to be fair, I don't think he'll ever, he'll ever score a goal like that again in his life. But as we said... He wasn't the, one of the players we singled out as well, was he? At the, at the start of the game. Well, he played last year for Varsity as well, and he had he played a significant role in that. But he wasn't hasn't been a goal scorer... Well, hasn't been a goal scorer this season as such. Christoph's been the main man to bag the goals. Um, he scored five in ten. But as we said, really, um, of maybe the presenters said, I think it Staffs has had a really tough season in regards to recruitment and player commitment because players have had to leave due to certain re to certain personal reasons or just lack of equipment in, in its in a, as a whole. The Staffs team and committee with Chris Smith and Kerr. Uh, seem to, well, want to keep the same kind of face and the same structure as to what they played Varsity in last year because it was last year was one of the most promising seasons for Staffs in a long time. They finished second in the league and played really well in Varsity. So they wanted to keep that core, so didn't really recruit many players when the Give It Goes and the trials came along in the summer. Um, however, after winning the first game 5-0 against Warwick in the in the opening game of the season. Since then, commitment has been struggled with commitment, and it's really Smith and Kerr that have held the club to held the club together. And I think that goal for Smith is just deserved as to how much he's done for Staffs Uni over the last three years. And absolutely, that goal will it'll perk Staffs up a bit. They were looking a little bit. I don't want to say lethargic, but they were mm. second best to a lot of things uh, in the lead up to that goal. But obviously, the final sort of three or four minutes of that half, it was all Staffs in the end. But Staffs aren't playing like a side who have lost eight out of ten games this season and haven't won varsity in a long, long time. They're playing, they're playing like a team who's galvanised and I know that six of these players that play today started in the varsity last year, so maybe that helps and they've had a lot of time together to gel um, a good few weeks and prepare really, really hard for this one-off fixture every year. I think if we were to base um, who we th predict will win at the end of the game, anyone that was non-biased here, not that I, there are many people that are non-biased here, um, but anyone that is non-biased would probably say staffs based on the first half, probably be able to see out this game and win. We'll see, we'll have to see I guess, because Keel looked very dangerous on the counter and when they put the balls up into the, into the air towards the centre halves, because and I'd bank Kerr and Gonzalez dealing with a lot of things but when the striker gets on the wrong side of the defender, they've escaped on a couple of times in the first half. Um, but if we were saying in the second, if staffs get the ball down, I think the way to win it, if they put, put the ball into Christoph's feet and Gray... Uh, He's very runs, skillful. Gray's very skillful and he runs it and you can play off Christoph. Gray can play off Christoph on the, on the floor rather Christoph than can even looking play into the Gray. air. Yeah, exactly, because if they're both If the ball has so played into Gray fast. to his feet, Christoph can get in behind the last man. He's done it a few times as well. We've seen his pace. I mean, straight away, you look at his pace. He's already charging at the defence, and they um, deal with it. A big 45 coming up as Gonzalez clears towards Smith. Um, he definitely looks up for it now, doesn't he? Very pumped indeed. The adrenaline must be shooting through the body. And it's great pressure there by the president, and it's gone out for a throw in on this near side, Woodruff. Uh, local lad played for U Toxeter, the left back, and he'll go over and take to another throw. And again, his opposite number actually, uh, the full back on the other side, um, Kolf. He's missed quite a lot of the season, but and unfortunately wasn't at full health, but and full fitness. But today he seems all the more well brilliant, really. Um, certainly showcasing himself on with the cameras showing as Keel. Look to come away, but Sims wins it in the middle um, and plays it towards. Look like Mackenzie running or Mackenzie Faulkner running in there. Maybe Ram. a little bit of a sho shove in the back. 
Referee hasn't spotted it though, from Sims. That's Ajazi who takes a few touches and spreads it out to Willis. Um, he, it doesn't sit down and Hijazi can't control it, much to his frustration. And the keeper will go away. I thought for a moment then Willis might hit a, Smith, a Chris Smith-esque shot when it, the ball sat up on the edge of the area. Uh, but instead he tried to find his big number, uh, number 22, his big striker. Um, but they couldn't make a chance uh, out, of the, out of the opportunity. It's an intriguing battle at... Well, at the back first half, Hajazi against Kerr. Hajazi is very strong. Uh, he uh, likes it into feet. He's really strong. He's backing into Kerr and not letting him get past and win the ball like he wants to. He's already out-muscled um, Gonzalez a few times in the first half. That's well cleared up by Woodruff. Um, and luckily, it's a staff's throw-in as Griesford couldn't keep the ball in play. Scroll the first goal, I believe. Did yes, he was. confirmation of that? Or? I believe it was. Um, look at him now. He was the guy who was leading the celebrations as Gray uh, beats his marker and wins a throw-in on this near side. Woodruff will come up to take it. The staff's fans, as much as the players, are up for this one. <laughs> Gray. Yeah, yeah. Woodruff. Plays it in feet to Christoph, who can't, the big man can't control it. Offside. And the, yeah, Christoph has been called off for offside. Scored six last season, Christoph, so had a similar season this year with five. I think it was um, Copeman? Capewell. Capewell. Uh, I think it was Capewell that was caught offside. He may have just, just lingered off at the, yeah. the far side there. Colf will look to close down Willis, who comes infield, finds Ran, but there's no one there, and Woodruff will clear. It's a big clearance there. But then it's straight back into the staff's oh, half. That, that was a cross-come shot, but it was well watched by Cadman. Looked dangerous for a minute, I must say. But it dipped quite quickly, fortunately. It's one of them crosses where it could just loop in at the far post, but didn't quite have the pace on it. Christoph tries to take it down. And instead he, he sprays it to well. Smith. There's, there's loads of space for the president, but he takes a touch. Was there a penalty there? I, I don't, don't think so. Yeah, the referee says so. no, he I waves it he's away. Looking for it. I think he'd realised he kicked the ball too far in front of him. He wasn't yeah. going to reach it. He tried to initiate the, the contact. I, I don't know if there was contact, much contact, but he tried to fool the referee. This guy's refed in the championship. There's no way of getting over him. Keel will take the goal kick. Kerr calls for it and collects. Plays it out to Capewell, uh, who's been fairly quiet in the, in the game so far, but had a few chances to hit the target um, in the first half. It's great attack from that... Sims. Adonai uh, has been very prominent for Keel today but Woodruff has been equally on the left flank and he looks to beat Griesford and wins a corner. Fantastic effort there by the left back and Sims will go over to take it which is a big chance. Staffs are beginning to play a lot more direct approach when they're running at the ball taking on their man which they didn't do enough in the first half. They're getting onto the front foot as well all initiated by Kerr at the back charging into the midfield and winning a big header uh, followed up by Woodruff there, who did well to get around the back, but good defending from the goal scorer Geisford. The nerves would have certainly settled now. Smith's looking for the short, but Smith Sims isn't ready. Smith gets it in the end. He puts the ball in, and it's just about back post. It's still not headed clear, it's still in. Can Kiel get it away? It's gone out for. It's not. It has. It's offside. There's an offside flag up on Christoph by the looks of it. As Kiel looked to. Spread There's the ball a free man forward. Here. There's a free man. It was three on two then, but if the ball was good enough. It's a great pass there. Smith, good Brilliant interchange. From Sims as well. Sims tries to play in Christoph, but unfortunately the midfielder and the striker weren't on the same wavelength. And the ball's gone straight through to Murphy, who hasn't had a lot to deal with in this game so far, apart from Smith's absolute worldy.
which he didn't get anywhere near to. It's a great touch of moment ago from Sims to take it away from the left, from the right back, the kill right back. He's done that a few times now. He's looking more and more influential as the game progresses. He may have made the wrong choice going inside because I think there was definitely an extra man out here for Stas with uh, Chris Smith and Woodruff coming on as well at left back. And he decided to go inside where a lot of key players were. Faulkner frees Christoph down the right. That's a fantastic challenge there by Bert to stop any sort of cross. Christoph had an opportunity there to lay it off inside to, is that Kate Paul? Yeah. Um, and didn't take it. Probably the wrong choice. Kolf. Sims whips it in and it's straight towards Murphy. So the first save he's made, it wasn't a difficult one. But I don't, I've not yeah. seen him make a save yet. <laughs> Does that class as a shot on target? It will do on the stats. Uh, yeah. I'm sure. Smith tries to free Gray, but instead it's fallen to Guisford, who plays in the Jazzy. There's a, a free kick there. there. Gonzalez just getting on the wrong side of the striker. It's, it's an opportunity to get this into the box here. They've got some very tall players arriving at the back stick now. It's Ran, possibly the shortest player on the pitch, is going over to take this free kick. And he's, I'm looking, probably whip it in towards the back post. He does that indeed, but that's a fantastic header by Smith to look it over everybody's head and out for a corner. He's got a great delivery, Ram has. Been, his delivery's been dangerous all game. And we're coming up to another one now as he goes over to take the corner. As the crowd go brilliant, silent. Brilliant atmosphere. Certainly coming from the staff's end more than the keel end. Um, despite, I'd say, keel bringing more numbers as Ran whips this free kick in. Pugh Jones goes to the far post, but it's gone all the way to the back where Willis is. There's, oh, it's oh, off the bar. The I think bar. that was Hijazi under the post. And that's a fantastic challenge there by Cole to deny Hijazi again. Brilliant play by Staffs. Somehow it manages to stay out. I think it was Brilliant a bit play of a... Brilliant play by Keel. Yeah, yeah, as well. Brilliant play by Keel. It was like time stood still there as they had a loop towards the back post. Everyone stood and watched it. Uh, and yeah, as it came back in, Kulf with a vital block. Another Ram corner. delivery is causing problems. It's gone to the front post this time. That's Gonzalez who gets highest and heads out for throwing. Keel certainly applying some sort, well, a lot of pressure at the moment. Staffs just need to get out of their half. Uh, and relieve some of this, some of the chances that Kiel are creating at the moment. They've but definitely settled into the second half, Kiel have. Would you say better than Staffs? Well, it's hard to say because if Kiel have only really been attacking for about two minutes, Staffs will be attacking the entire half. Sims Here clears and Here's Christoph Christoph. will chase the keeper down. But it's, and Faulkner wins the possession in the midfield. Intercepts the, the keeper as well. That was, the that was pass brilliant by Christoph. He, he worked really hard there, chased down Pew Jones, the centre half, and then Murphy in goal, and he forced the error. He's definitely relishing the opportunity to play varsity on his home ground, Christoph is. 100%. It was well read by Faulkner, actually, as well, the pass. Of course, former uh, academy scholar at Port Vale and formerly played for Macclesfield Town, who's another local team. It was very clever of him to draw the foul there when it looked like the ball ran away from him. It's whipped in, but it's over the head of Kerr. <laughs> the two experienced players, most experienced players in the side, Fortunately, couldn't link together there. Um, but a signal of the arm to show the idea was there. And Curl will regain his position next to um, what, similar height, Ijazi, as a, the Kiel striker. And there's a. I'm liking the look of the strong back line at the moment for Staffs. But then Kiel look equally uh, comfortable on their side. That's a fantastic Brilliant header away header. by Pugh Jones. Reactions like like lightning, really. He definitely he needed to get that header in. Uh, Christoph was in if he hadn't. Christoph gets to the byline and there's a corner. Now, if there is a draw today, 
we have 10 minutes each way and extra time and then if not we could go to penalties not sure i'm a fan of that i feel like this sort of game going straight to penalties would be very interesting indeed it's very cold isn't it, <laughs> it is, yeah. how are your hands guys cold still cold but i'm sure they won't drop sims off. plays a free but set piece sorry on the floor and it's cleared away but colf will try and keep the pressure alive and that's geesford who plays forward into Jars, he's, bit, he's way behind the staff's defence there. There was nobody back, everybody forward to try and um, It's the second time in the second the half now. They caught out staff's defence, almost outnumbering them. It's cleared forward. Pugh Jones spreads. Colf takes a touch and can't pass to Sims. And it's Griesford who picks up possession for Keel. He finds Rand, that's a it's fantastic a turn. Can he finish? That's a fan it's Great fantastic save, save by Cabin Absolutely there. Brilliant save. I was always, I was, touch? A, I was about, yeah, What's fantastic touch play by Rand. I was about to say it was a fantastic save, but then Cabin couldn't keep hold of it and the ball almost squirmed to the bottom corner. Uh, and that could have, that was inches away from being 1-0 up, from Keel being another 2-1 up again. Or, as Ran whips in the front uh, so not the the corner. Great delivery that is. It's come out to Chave, but Christoph will now hold up possession and let Staffs settle. But it's played all the way back to the Keel keeper. The work rate of Christoph. Yeah, yes. Work rate is brilliant. Second to Never lets off. Let's do it again here, Keel. Willis has space down the left. He'll box it. That's a fantastic box by Gonzalez. Puts the body on the line. Shots for handball, but I can't. I don't think you can call that handball when I think his arm was down by his side, not in a unnatural position, and it came at him quite quickly. I don't think he knew too much about it. From here, I thought it hit his chest. Yeah. But even if it did hit his arm, his arm was down by his side, and it didn't look. He looked like he tried to make sure it didn't hit his arm. Got a double change here for Keel. By the look of it. Looks as though Willis is coming off, and so is the captain, Tomlin. There's three, su three substitutions oh, yeah. there. The number 10 has come off as well. As well I think that's Chave. I think 20, isn't it? Yeah, so Tomlin, Chave, and... I can't remember the last person. I think it was 20, person, 10 and 11. And Willis, yes, you're right. <laughs> and the replacements, by the looks of things, and Mason. Great. Come on, I believe, as well, yeah. As Burt comes up, whips it in towards the substitute Grange, but the keeper comes well. We're going to find out the well. last. Connery. Connery, number 15, yes. So there are the three changes for Keel, trying to shake things up, but staffs at the moment seem fairly happy. That's Grange, plays through to Ran, who holds the ball up really nicely. Griesford whips it in, headed towards Grange, who can't find his man on the back post. And Mosley will clear up and play towards his centre half, who tries to play forward towards Ran, but again, the frustrations in the Keel camp. And Staffs will be more than happy to let Keel do that all day. I think going into this game as well, Staffs certainly the more underdogs. Um, especially after the season of being relegated. But Both teams are making each other work exceptionally hard. Um, I think staffs are beginning to feel the effects, definitely, um, coming into, I think, we're halfway through the bit, second half. Yeah, a little bit tired. Maybe Ian Cranston will roll a few substitutions. It's, that, it's the last game of the season. You know, you're putting absolutely everything and even more onto this pitch because, you know, the reward's coming and you get the big old break after this, and of course, the Varsity Gobble on Wednesday. Nobody remembers any other game other than Varsity, as Catewell looks to stretch his legs. It's a brilliant work rate, but his touch was just too much. He ran out of pitch there, and it was a great defending there by Edenayi, who, as, as I said before, has been a really prominent player in the Keel back line. An absolute rock. 
though Christoph struggles to get past him, so has uh, Nick Gray when he's burst forward. And a uh, capable there. Somewhat of a beast strength. at centre back. Christoph straying offside there again. Yeah, a few too many times Christoph's been offside for me. I think he's, qu he's quick enough not to not need to be offside. a bit too eager. A bit too eager, maybe. He knows if he's on the last man, then no one's catching him. Yay! 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 Well, Christoph has it to feet here. And he's lost out to the 21, who I believe is the third player to come on. Not sure of his name. Uh, Matt's, Matt's getting his microphone batteries changed at the moment, which is why you can't hear him <laughs> commentating his main bit. I'll take over. I'd like to see Faulkner get into the game a little bit more. We know of his quality. Hasn't had too much of the ball today. It's Squeezeford with a throw in on this near side. Staff's bellowing orders at each other to try and contain Kiel, but Rad has escaped through the back line. He's beaten the offside trap. He's beaten his marker as well. Can he force a shot away? He's still got possession. It's come out and oh, it's so close. I think it took a little nick there. Is there, no, just a goal kick. And that was to substitute Connery, who almost found the bottom corner there. Ram is definitely causing the staff's backline problems. He's constantly finding himself in the gap between the defense. And he's very quick. He's very technically gifted as well. While uh, Joe gets his mic changed, Connery actually was the first man out on the pitch earlier, wasn't he? Uh, re it was really early, taking shots with uh, all by himself and unfortunately for him it didn't pay off there as that's a good header down to Christoph by Smith and the ball goes right over our heads and out of the ground I might go and collect that later <laughs> I actually haven't got a football myself it's not one of your priorities as a student is it no no I'd rather get some pasta <laughs> as Christoph tries to hold the ball up. Oh, Sims, Sims could be in. Chase. That's brilliant defending again by Adonai. Fantastic brilliant from Sims. Defending. Brilliant from Sims. He's been very influential in the midfield so far this game. One of Staff's brightest talents alongside Mackenzie Faulkner in the middle as Sims again will whip the it's ball. Great in. ball. Straight underneath the goal, wasn't it? But the keeper somehow managed to claw it away from Christoph, who was right under his nose. I'd love to see the staff lads attacking the ball a little bit more when the when these crosses are being whipped in. It's been a few times now that none of them have come close to these balls, which are there for the taking. And let's be honest, that's went straight out for front with a little nick off a killed defender. Crit is thrown in and Christoph can't bring the ball down as Connery looks to escape. Rand will collect his loose ball. And Kiel look to break, it's three on three if Staffs can get the numbers back. Hijazi <laughs> looks to whip it in. Griezmann's at the back post. There's a free man to in. Him. Can he get a shot away? He can, but it's a fantastic block by Woodruff. And Kiel still have possession, but Christoph will come away with it. He's a little bit isolated, he needs an outlet, and finds, almost finds Gray in the middle, but he can't. And the referee's the missed a into clear his foul there. <laughs> Although Kate Pye was not focused on appealing, he's focused on getting back and helping the team, but it was a clear foul there. Kerr comes a long way out of his back line. And that's a perfect ball towards Kristoff. Absolutely beautiful. And he, that's well. Brilliant was there studs tackle. up there? Studs up? It was dangerous. It was, could have easily been a reckless challenge, but as you can see, Kristoff isn't complaining. Well, he's got away that he's, he's won the ball there. He's definitely got away with it. Had he not won the ball there, he'd be in serious trouble, I think. It's a leg breaker. Sims finds um, Christoph, who lays it off to Woodruff. Puts it in the middle. Gray's there in the middle. Can he turn and shoot? It's blocked by Pugh Jones. Faulkner looks to find Catewell, but his ball goes out of play. That's a rare mistake there from Faulkner in the middle of the park. He's not had the greatest games. No. Looks like Burt's no. gone down on the far side here. Yeah. He has Kiel. been struggling the, um, since the first half, isn't it? He, he took yeah. a knock in the first half. Yeah, he took a, took a quite few heavy knock. I don't think there was he's any contact twice. just there as, as he's gone down. Uh, Capewell chased after it, obviously the ball ran out of play, but he went down after the ball had gone out. Yeah, maybe a pull muscle or a tall muscle. 
next opportunity for the players of our staff and Keel to get a little bit of fluids on board. Will there be a winner? There's plenty of time for it. I would hope so. And who will be able to get it? Uh, who what, do you what think? What player will be able to come up who and become folklore in their respective university? Who do you think staffs will be looking to bring on? Gittins, Volker maybe, as Woodruff has to clear, well, deal with this very well. There might have been a hand there, but I think it was a natural movement of the arm, and it's cleared it's a all dangerous the way back ball. to the keeper. Keeper, oh, fantastic challenge there by Smith to dispossess the keeper, but that was brilliant pressure. As soon as the keeper had it, that was it. The staff's already it's a very noticed that it's a very the keeper was very pleasing feet. tackle that was, but maybe that was a better option than trying to dispossess the keeper. He's very far out of his area, and there are three men around him. Maybe the slide tackle wasn't the best option there. Just maybe stand up, close yeah. him down, give him no option. Try and win the ball off of him because if there's no one in goal, um, anywhere else on the pitch, any other player on the pitch, that's a brilliant tackle. Um, maybe a little bit unnecessary on the goalkeeper, 30 yards out out of his goal. Mm. Lloyd Murphy has looked a little bit shaky in this second half. Perhaps he's never fully recovered from Smith's screamer. It's a brilliant header. by Kerr to head it away. And it'll be required again here, but misjudges it. But Woodruff is there to sweep behind. There's a flick on there. Unlucky, well, Hugh Jones didn't mean it, but if had Christoph been on his toes, he might be able to latch onto it. Yeah, it was definitely a mistake from Pugh Jones. He's got away, that, got away with it that Christoph was looking to get back in, in position rather than chasing down any potential mistake. Very clever header from Gonzalez just to guide it back to the keeper under pressure. Keel, uh, Keel looking to win back possession from Staffs. And they almost do through Connery. But it's Capewell who will come away with the ball. Staffs with men up there. No one looking down the wing. Capewell still got it. That's an amazing run by the winger. There's a few occasions where he could have released there, but chose to go it alone over on this far side. Smith had plenty of space. It's just about getting your head up, isn't it? And yeah. kicking that pass. As Faulkner tries to do there. Comes to Gray. But Keel will try and deal with it, and their gateway is Grange. But Kerr will mop up Rand's misplaced pass. Woodruff is closed down by Grange. It's two on three for Stapp, for Keel at the moment. Rand will try and latch onto a through ball, but it's just runs, it's too far. For it's a very clever run, run from run Rand from. Uh, the center of the pitch just to creep round to the back post. He's a very clever little player he is. He's really grown into this game, hasn't he? Yeah, it's he's grown with confidence as well. The, the midfielder, obviously, he's running, breaking from midfield and he's not being tracked as closely as uh, Cranston might want him to. <laughs> Goal kick for Staffs. It's towards Gray, Faulkner in the middle, but Faulkner will win it. And he tries to spread it wide to Capewell, but it's well dealt with by Burt, who still looks a little bit <laughs> shaky, a little bit injured from the first half. Doesn't look to back to his full fitness, and Capewell will try and exploit that, surely. Um, and that's a misplaced header, but Pew Jones is there to sweep up for Keel. There are a few hands from Kerr there, but Keel still have possession. Just. However, Smith wins it early, and he'll look to break down the left wing. It's brilliant Can skill. He cut on the inside. No, he goes back again. He's turning Giesford inside out. He needs some support. He's come with Faulkner. Can he find Sims? He finds Sims in the middle. It's a sliding challenge. He's under pressure. Sims keeps possession very well. Smith takes it over this marker, and Keels almost get away with it. And it comes out as a goal kick. Another sliding challenge there by Smith. Someone had to pull the trigger. Maybe it was Sims' first time. There's a Someone few players down injured it. now. There's three players yeah. down injured. At We've got 20 minutes to go. This game's starting to take take effect. Injuries starting to occur now. Adonai looks like he's gone down with cramp. 
Cramp with 20 minutes to go is, is a, still a long way to go and to play with Cramp. With Christoph and Gray on you as well, you, you're going to have your work cut out. Yeah, I'm very I glad I'm not playing against them today. I think it's testament to Christoph and Gray as to how well they've done because Adonai is a very complete centre half along with Pugh Jones, but they've really worked him hard. I'd say as quick as Gray is, I've whenever he gets close to another player, he doesn't seem to have any sort of strength to be able to hold them off. That's what that's where Christoph is maybe a cut above Gray for me. It's a concern for Keel here, especially because they've used all three subs. Is it is it a friendly game, so are they allowed to use all subs, or is it just three? I'm not sure. I'm honestly... <laughs> <laughs> something we should have <laughs> thought, thought about, about, <laughs> about this. <laughs> Nobody informed Talk, us about this. Talking about, talking about uh, not enough strength. Perhaps Xavier Chupo is uh, someone who could be brought on. Of course, Josh Kerr described him before the game in my pre-match interview as, well, a Patrick Vieira, nice long, long limbs, really, really strong. He's uh, very tall, and very and tall. Very so tall. maybe he's the person that you want to bring on with 20 minutes to go. Especially in the midfield here, as we've got Gray and Faulkner in the centre of midfield, they are tend to push on quite a bit. Hijazi, Greensford, Grange. Sprays it wide. Ball. It's misread by Cape Well. That's Connery. Beats his man. Takes a shot. Was there a little affection there? No, it's gone out for a goal no, kick. Didn't trouble the keeper can whatsoever. So you've got a sub now for Stuffs. Looks as though Rob Falker, the second year sports journalism <laughs> student, might be coming on. It's cool off from right back. He's had a decent game call. I think he's starting to tire a little bit now. I saw there as Connery skipped past him. I think it's. I think I'm wrong. It's actually Gittins that has, I believe, has come on. I'm just waiting to see his shirt number. Yes. Um, yes, it is Gittins who has come on. Connor Gittins. Smith outside the boot ball. It's a brilliant ball. Looks to go to the byline. Grace in the middle. Can he square it? Can he put it back? Oh, he's cleared off the line by Keel. It's Burt. It's Murray Burt, who's been well involved in this game. He's headed it off the line. That was bound for the top corner. He's definitely impressed today. That is certainly, if well, as if the staff's fans didn't need another moment, another incentive to be louder. <laughs> That's giving it to him. Sims will take this corner. It's Faulkner who runs towards the front post, but Sims can't find him. Disappointing delivery that. Hits the first man on the knee, on the bounce as well. How close was that? Unbelievable. It was destined for the top corner as well. I can see it from here. It was definitely going to the top corner. Keel hit the bar as well in the first half, as Christoph can't bring that down. Keel will look to break, but Staffs have men back. Gonzalez goes two. He's left the, he's left the open side in the middle of the... Back Brilliant tackle from Sim. Tackle there. <laughs> and again, and again. Burt looks to win it. Grange on the left side. Can someone whip it across? It's Burt, it's low, it's clear by Gonzalez. Sims is struggling here. Yeah. yeah, Sims, he raced back and put in a great challenge. And then he, he played a bit, he lost a bit of composure there and just hacking at the ball to try and get it away. And then Keel came right back at them. Uh, the tackles are starting to fly in now, with about a quarter of an hour to go. The uh, staff's medics have ran onto the field. There could be a change coming on. Christoph goes to um, intake some much needed fluid. Xavier is getting ready on the far side here. Away from everyone, it looks. I'm not sure how tall he is from here, but six foot three, maybe six four. Oh, uh, I've seen I'd just him say very six, six four, six five, maybe, maybe mm. six six. He's very tall. Just the person you need to defend and score from set pieces late in a game, <laughs> as Hijazi brings the ball down. Christoph tries to get a foot in, but Burt puts the ball in, and Cavan will mm. collect the ball nice and easily. Lets it bounce in front of him. Stafford, 10 men on the pitch at the moment. Uh, Sims is just coming back on now. 
I think it's a case of settling down, isn't it? <coughs> Gittins gets stuck in, and it's a good challenge in the end, but Keel come away with it. Spread wide to Smith, but he's beaten to the ball by Giesford. It's out for a throw-in by courtesy of Woodruff. Yeah, he's done well there because Giesford was on the front foot. He, was, he had a lot more speed than Woodruff, but he might be able to get a foot onto it and put it out for a throw-in because uh, there was no protection behind him. So Keel thrown on this near side. Headed away by Woodruff. And that's the substitute Mason getting involved for Keel. He's, that's, I'd say, his first major involvement. I yeah. think maybe a switch of formation might be um, something Staff's definitely be looking at. The ball goes high up into the air, mostly wins it. Can run, gain control of it in the box he can. He plays it back to. Oh, and it's flashed so offside the goal as well. Offside. By Connery. Offside. It is offside. I think maybe Gray might come off for um, Xavier. We're starting to say less and less of his name, aren't we, Gray? Yeah, he's, not he, he's struggled a bit with the physicality. Of course, he's quite, it's quite oh, little. He's very quick. He makes up for it with the speed, but um, he has struggled today with the physicality of the midfield and the defence, of course. We've got about 12 minutes left in this uh, second half. What would you said about changing formation? What would you change it to, do you think? I think maybe push Faulkner a bit more forward, give him a bit more support to um, uh, Christoph. He he's drifted in and out of the game, but he's lo looked a more a lot more effective when he's been playing in the role that Gray has been playing. They've switched a few times. Good header by Gittins. Yes. Kate will bring it down and oh, put the ball on. forward to Christoph, who chases. The keeper was way out of his goal there, and we know he's not very good with his feet. That was good pressure by Christoph. Capewell does well to keep possession, and it's gone out, unfortunately, on the far side in front of the Keel fans who have given Capewell a lot of grief on that near side, on that far side in the second half. Perhaps now is time for a change for Staffs. Of course, it is still 1-1. <laughs> That was a mismatch if you've ever seen one as Adibai <laughs> came in against Gray. Sims clears high and away. But Kiel still have possession. We said the team who bring the ball down the most would be able to win it. And it looks as though Kiel are that side at the moment. As Woodruff does very well. Is that too. Adyeni for Kiel? He, he's not going to be able to continue, I don't think. Yeah. Kiel might have to see out this game with 10 men, depending, of course, on the rules. Um, oh, looks it looks like it's just cramp. It looks as Maybe. though a few Kiel men are warming up, actually, so we might be able to make more substitutes than three. Yeah. Mm. I did say it was a mismatch between Gray and Adenai, but I wasn't Xavier expecting looks like Gray to come off ready. the better <laughs> of the two. It took him a while to get up from that challenge, uh, and since then he has sat back down again. Xavier looks like he's getting ready. He's between the two uh, dugouts. He still hasn't got his coat off, though. No need to get it off until absolutely necessary. It is, it's not <laughs> it's a little bit night. nippy. It's very nippy. My hands this, are beginning yeah. to... Uh, the sun is long gone. Then ice again, though, to this mic. We would have prayed for this weather last year. It was so cold, we had a storm over. Uh, and I think it was, there was still... I looked at the photos the other day, and there was still snow on the pitch. As... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right, Dan. It's incredible. Expressions. <laughs> uh, Giesford puts a throwing in. It's dangerous, but Sims beats run with a header in the area and eventually gets a clearance, but it's closed down by Mosley, who plays it back to Burt. Whips the ball back in. Giesford's making a run at the back post. It's chested down by Hijazi and cleared by Stamps. So Adonai has gone off and he won't be coming back on, but it looks like there's a substitute ready. Uh, it's interesting, the staffs have only made two, uh, one substitution with about 10 minutes left. Maybe they are looking to um, dominate the extra time period. Um, Possibly, they will have the better legs. The yep. Smith sprays the ball forward to Christoph. It's not chase. the ball he wanted. It's not the ball he wanted. And he's what he's want to throw in. Mm. 
Yeah, the uh, key are now ready to make that change with Adonai coming off. Can't quite see who it is coming on at the moment. I'd assume it would be a centre half to replace his prominent position in the uh, back line. It was a big blow. He, we've mentioned he's been he's been a, a rock in the air, a rock at the back for Keel. It's a big blow for them to lose him with 10 minutes to go. Just waiting for confirmation to see who it is that has come on. Looks like George Barker. It's very. Wow. It's a very poor decision there from the referee. I don't want to be slating the referee too much in my commentary, but um, the staff's fans towards was, the left of me here went it, absolutely crazy about that decision. Bundled, bundled to the ground. No challenge on the ball. Um, it was clear for A free kick there would have been a very good position as well. Big call there by Josh Kerr again. Hold on, Leo. Griezford on this near side. Take a throw, and he's been, he's had an influential part to play in this, in the tail of this game, scoring the first goal, and has been ever prominent on this left wing, of right wing, sorry, as he beats Sims and Graves tries to chase, but the ball trickles out for a goal kick to Staffs. That's one thing that the fullbacks, we've also mentioned Greaseford there, Bert on the other side, we've mentioned him a lot as well. They've, they've been the most involved, and that's maybe with Staffs looking to use the width. Uh, it's a big pitch here at Newcastle Town, they can use all of it. <laughs> as well as the big pitch, sorry, as well as the big pitch, it's going to cause some really tired legs towards the uh, latter last, well, less than 10 minutes of the game to go. And as I said, yeah, as I, I mean, the big pitch is going to cause a lot of fatigue. It's interesting to see that even with the uh, substitution, Newcastle, Newcastle, <laughs> Keel are keeping their um, line extremely high here. And they've dealt with the ball that time. It's the substitute that's coming away, Barker, but Gonzalez will mop up for Staffs and clears it. Staffs have still only made one change. Looks like X, as they call him, uh, the big man in the mid midfield. Patrick Vieira. Patrick Vieira, yeah. Won't be coming on as of yet. His warm-up's been halted. I wonder what is going through Ian Cranston's mind right now. As Hijazi looks to force Gonzalez off of the ball. There is someone being briefed right now by um, staff's coach. That's Rob Folker, the second year sports journalism student. Did he come on earlier? No, sorry, that was Gittins. I thought it was Rob. Oh, it wasn't. okay. <laughs> Josh Kerr said Gittins would likely be a first substitution as the ball comes in. And the keeper will try to contain it, Always but he does it. The ball's dropped. And Great clearance. It's cleared by Staffs. Fantastic clearance by Mackenzie Faulkner. As I was saying, yeah, Gittins was more likely to be the first substitution, and it's Faulkner that's warming up. We've played, I mean, you guys will know him from Sevens as well. Uh, very, very much a live wire in the centre forward role. Brilliant with his feet, very agile, very quick, and maybe that's what staffs need in order to break down this uh, keel back line and maybe get a winner. Xavier is now being briefed as well, and it looks like he's about to take off his coat and um, get ready. For a double change, maybe. I think it's definitely what uh, staffs require to get a bit more life into their game at the minute. There's a few tired legs out there now. Everyone throwing the kitchen sink at this game. Of course, it's a long old summer until the season starts again. And there's only one varsity every year. As Gittins tries to clear, but it's gone out for a throw in to Keel instead. Five minutes remaining. Now would be a very good time to bring on the two substitutions. We stand beside Ian Cranston as Woodruff is required to clear. Xavier has finally got his coat off, by the way. Or, or it's, it's almost off. He's been going at that coat for about five minutes now. Rand tries to find his, wit, his fellow winger. And was there a penalty? There's a shout there from Keel but the kill man seemed to go down very easily. And has stayed down as well, but I think it was good defending from Gittings there. 
uh, at right back. He shepherded the ball out well. Substitution time for Staffs. It is. It's Falker and Chupu who have who are coming on, and in replace of Gray and Capewell. Capewell. We were mentioning so, Gray was looking tired. He's you know, not influencing the game as much as he can. So there's a combination here of strength and power and pace. And I think that's what staffs need. A new threat from set pieces. We can already see immediately that he is the Towering tallest. over everybody else, yeah. The, the second tallest man on the pitch is the one that's marking him. And we can see how X is clearly taller. Ball is played forward, but Gonzalez is there to mop up. And Sims will look to feed Kristoff. He was offside by Clearly a long way offside, there. Yes. Uh, he's not ended up going for it, so Linesman hasn't put his flag up. Murphy clears. And Keel will look to bring this down from Guisford. However, he's on the same wavelength. I think Connery asked a little bit too much of his fullback. Guisford must be getting tired. He's been charging up and down this right hand side all game. Uh, he's still doing it as well. Steam engine. Absolutely. He may have to do it for another 20 minutes yet. Unless there is a goal in these final and moments of the game. penalties. I think it's fitting that this game goes to extra time as well. It, both teams deserve to be in that situation. Of course, it is one all. And both teams have had chances. Staff's having a chance cleared off the line as Burt goes forward. It's to Ran. And it's cleared by Gittin. Christoph looks to bring this down. And as I was saying, Kiel have had chances. They've hit the bar in the first half. So it could be 2-2, two, two, could be 3-3. Three, three. It could have gone either way for Staffs or Kiel. But at the moment, we're looking at extra time. Connery on the edge of the area. Close find Giesford, and that's a brilliant challenge again by Smith. We've got two and a half minutes left of uh, normal time, I'm hearing. Looking set for extra time. What would you say to your players if you were a manager on the touchline right now? Say keep going. Um, now I think staffs have the physical advantage. Um, so get a lot more in their faces, I'd say. Try and force a few mistakes. I think Christoph has been brilliant at uh, leading the line. Um, he hasn't had too much of the ball at his feet, but he's done really well to create the chances that he has. Would you, who, would, who would say is your uh, staff's man of the match? Staff's man of the match? Um, maybe Sim. Sims in uh, centre midfield. He's been influential, as well as Kerr winning everything. Um, it's tough to decide, isn't it? It's is very tough. To, there's been a lot of great performances, including this man right here, Christoph who has the ball and the corner flag, and he's won a corner very well indeed under very pressure cheeky, that from was. Pew Jones. Sims will go over to take this. Christoph does look a bit more tired now. That's the one thing I would uh, point out about him. Still waiting for X and Volker to get uh, into the game. Volker. Surprisingly, X is not going into the box, yeah, there, so he's the lurking tallest, on the edge. Perhaps he's got well, a maybe he's going to dash into the box. Patrick, there he is. Yes, yeah. there, there he goes. Go. And but it's it a poor corner it and it's straight at the front post. But we, Staps have another opportunity cleared by Burt on that front post there. Is he, maybe even Patrick, well, our Staps Patrick Vieri he has a right foot like one and can hit one from the edge of the area into the top corner. You never know. It's towards X, but he can't get right, con right contact on it under pressure from Keel. And Murphy clears long up the pitch. It's That's two on two here. Longest clearance of the day. Can Staffs deal with it? They can through Woodruff and oh. Gittin. That was good play there. Hijazi was uh, bearing down on both of them. Kerr tries to find Christoph. But Pew Jones intercepts and Ram, who has been brilliant this second half, especially. He's great with the ball at his feet, isn't he? It's the end of normal well, time. That's, that's it, full time. That is full time. Is it full time? I think it's the end of normal time. So it's a very well, we got not brilliant extra second time. half, and we'll hand the over to your our presenters. Yeah. Ready when you are.
finish 1-1. We're going to extra time. Ten minutes each way, then the dreaded penalty shoot out. That's it. Keel are tired. I feel so. I feel, I mean, it's getting to the later stages of the game. Yeah. They've been going out all day, and now they come here for a game, and now it's gone to extra time, as you're saying, Josh. Um, honestly, they're getting the team talks now. Um, honestly, they're going to be really looking to get it fast flowing and hopefully get a goal because there's only 10 minutes. That's not a lot in terms of football, and they are tired, as you say, so they're really going to have to really get involved, really get stuck in to try and make something happen. Otherwise, there will be penalties. Can Keel hold out for 20 minutes? Um, well, he looks like they can hold out for 20 minutes, uh, but as the game, as the second half went on, you can see some of the players going running down for yeah. cramp, uh, for fatigue, they're getting tired, like you said. Yeah. Mm. So that's going to be very, very crucial. So they're going to get back. They're going to get back. Drink a lot of water. Get the system hydrated and get them lungs. Get that air in the body and get them get the body ready, ready for that crucial, very, very hard, very, very hard. Definitely from start point of view, you know, extra, extra few minutes. Mm. Yeah. Um, Stas were a better team in that second half. I felt anyway. I don't know what what you thought we were watching at the sidelines. Exactly, exactly the same. Um, we went on. First few minutes, you could definitely tell they want it. They want, you know, the staff wanted it more. Um, mm. There was loads of chances that we didn't, we didn't get. Um, the, 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 one of the clear-cut chances we, we got was from uh, number nine, our striker. Uh, what a clearance. Mm. Oh, both from defenses from, have been from, absolutely yeah. amazing. Exactly. There's a penalty shout as well, really quickly. They're just about to swap over uh, for, the, for the first period of extra time. There's a penalty shot down here. Me and you felt it was. Yeah, well, mm. I thought it may. No. I thought it may have been a bit soft. The refs letting a lot of things go, but honestly, I think that's is granted in varsity right now. Yeah. Um, to be honest, it's going to be an amazing couple of minutes for now for the extra time. Um, but hopefully, we keep the game flowing and keep it progressing forward to what should be a really, really good finale. So varsity 2019, the men's football has gone to extra time. We're going to hand over to our commentary team uh, to take you through the next 20 minutes of action. First half of extra time is just about to get underway. As we said, staff have made two changes to the starting lineup: Volker and X coming on. And Kiel have made four changes. Of course, running out of legs. And this is going to ask a lot of Smith and Kerr and Co. It's about who wants it more, isn't it? It's varsity. Exactly. Christoph almost gives away a free kick there, but Kiel still have possession. Burt's got a lot of space on this near side, and he's got possession now. That's a good challenge there by the substitutes. Mason in the midfield. Great touch from Christoph there. Smith on the far side. Basically Woodruff. It's closed down by Greasewood. I'm sure he's feeling it at the moment. I'll tell you, we've only talked about Keel players going down with cramp and looking like they're tired. Staff still look like they're they're fresh as ever. Yeah. I think that's a very positive thing. Obviously, as extra time goes on, these well, we've been conditioned to play 110 minutes as they will after the end of extra time. We'll have 10 minutes and then a break. And another 10 minutes and possibly penalties. Yeah, let's not forget some of these players are semi-pro, so they will be used to this anyway. Casey Fulton in particular, captain of Hamley Town. Let's not forget Christoph, this is his home pitch. Ball has been spread wide. Connery tries to come on, man, but Paddy judges the ball pass very well. USA chance from the uh, staff fans. He has been brilliant in goal. He's maybe could have done better for for the Keel goal. We didn't. I've got an amazing view of it here. Made a was... brilliant save as well, though. Let's not forget he did make a brilliant save around the start of the second half. He must be. Or the start of the first the, half. Must be shattered off yesterday's American football as well. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise him. Wouldn't surprise me if he's doing something else on yeah. uh, Wednesday as well. Basketball, maybe. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Someone likes to win. Yeah. 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 
Ran tries to free Mason. The ball's been yeah. outplayed for yeah. it. Looks to be a stance yeah. throwing. Some of these. says no yeah. chance and well Mason passed it straight to nobody miscommunication Apologies for the technical difficulties there, but luckily we didn't miss any huge chances as Christoph comes away with the ball in the midfield. 
and it's Smith can't keep possession and it's, it looks like it's gone out for the linesman can't seem to make up his mind the staff's throwing staff's taking it and Smith boxes it towards Falker and it's gone out for a corner this is a this is a chance now Sims has put a couple of disappointing balls in a couple of good balls in as well but as we said before, staffs need to attack these corners if they're going to score from them. It's time to utilise X in his uh, height. Brill. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, time to use the height. We're coming up towards half time in this uh, extra time period. And of course, Keel have been so solid at the back, it must be said yeah. as well. It's actually not Sims taking this corner. Gittin has gone across to take it. Falker is lurking on the edge of the area but the ball is put into the front post and it's burnt again as that's a similar situation for staffs and seem to be hitting the front man more than getting the ball into the danger zone where x is lurking well, if you can't the, really pass the front man you're not going to score from corners i'm afraid you need to get it up high to the walls of the back post even a nod on from kerr because kerr's taller than his marker at the moment at the back post there's plenty of options in there you just need to get the ball up onto the penalty area as they do here but it's too far, it's over hit, even for Gonzalez, and it's a throw into very disappointing Keel. From it staffs. is very disappointing. Very disappointing. Um, when you look at Keel, they've so consistently managed to get the ball into the box. Um, every time, Ram's delivery has been exceptional, and unfortunately, Stafford she haven't matched it. I wonder what other substitutions could be made by either side just to bring a spark to this game, change the game. You need a, a Chris Smith kind of contribution, as he did in the first half, to win this game for either side. Adam Thorley is yet to come on for staffs, and so is Con O'Hara, who's been scoring recently for the seconds. So could he be a goal-scoring threat to come on and change the game? As Hijazi looks to head to, well, nobody, essentially. Ram chases down, but Kerr does really, really well to read the run and block off the midfield maestro. As Gittins finds X. X to Christoph. It's a good little clearance in there, and that is the half. We will stay with you for the uh, mo few moments where the players will take a little bit of a breather. They'll gather up, they'll swap ends, and We'll go again for 10 minutes, and if there's no deciding goal, penalties, boys. That's going to be exciting, isn't it? The nerves, will be the most nerves I imagine a lot of these will feel, uh, certainly with uh, their respective university shirts on. A penalty shootout in varsity must be, oh, I'd hate to take a penalty in that. It's like a World Cup final penalty shootout, isn't it? It is, it is. But the weird thing is, it's the World Cup final that you think about all year round, and you, can, you know you're going to be playing, you know you're going to have it. So... And the thing is, these boys, if they miss a penalty or even if they score with the winning one, it will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Um, for the next 12 months, some of them won't have another opportunity to play on this pitch for this university. And it's, a, it's a chance for both teams, let's not forget, to cement themselves in their own histories. Their own history books. Um, Kill be looking to do it just as much as stuff. As we get underway for the final 10 minutes of this match, it's been so entertaining so far. Really open, and X has just won a challenge in the midfield. This is a big 10 minutes. It's time to put your name in the history books. Chris Smith already has in the first half with we'll, arguably the best varsity goal uh, of all time. We're already saying uh, at the half time, Smith, well, they'll be selling posts of him surely in, uh, oh, absolutely. in Gobble on Wednesday. And I'll be buying one, I can tell you. <laughs> I'll be buying three. <laughs> Gonzalez is standing over this free kick for Staffs. He'll look to put it into the area. It might just be over here. It's towards Kerr, who cannot nod it on. Offside as well. The offside flag did go to up. Towards his, dis towards his disappointment, Kerr said he was saving himself for this game, having not scored at all this season, uh, despite scoring five last campaign he in definitely ten be games. He'll definitely penalty, won't he? Won't he? I would, I would bank Kerr, President Smith, Faulkner, yeah. um, Christoph, yeah. and probably Rob Faulkner, the substitute, I'd bank on taking a penalty. 
but you've not scored all season, no one will care if you score in these final 10 minutes of extra time here. No, as long as you don't concede. That is true. We saw it at the weekend, didn't we, in the Checker Trade Trophy final, the drama that extra time can bring. So maybe we could be in store for some more, but I can see a lot of tired legs out there as Mason tries to find Hijazi and Gittins will clear away. Christoph again looking fairly isolated, but Christoph, he's now picked he Hugh Jones's no, pocket and he'll go, he'll go down the wing. Smith is in the middle. Christoph is still going towards the byline. Can he put, find a cross? And unfortunately, he can't great get tackle. the ball out of his feet, and it's a great tackle by Kiel to clear the ball away. He, he, did, he, got, the, he got it stuck under his feet yeah. there, Christoph, if he was running through. A little bit too quick for his own good. Perhaps he should have put the ball in earlier. Possibly, yeah. He should have got his head up first. He drove to the byline before starting to get his head up. And by that point, Geesford and Pugh Jones had closed on him. Hugh Jones is having a little bit of a talking to with the referee. Ball is there to be won, isn't it? Especially in games like this, you can't expect to not get challenged like that. It's a great ball. Hugh Jones back. puts the ball forward. And it's Smith just cannot keep the ball in from uh, Woodruff there on the left. So Keel looking the brighter in this first opening stages in the second period of extra time. Giesford throws the ball to Connery in the midfield. But he's closed down by Faulkner, the Hanley Town captain. So ball is put in by Giesford, who <laughs> tries to almost wish it goes to edge it further and further towards the goalkeeper. You could see him craning his neck to try and will it towards <laughs> goal, but... Offside flag was never happening. Up as and well. the offside flag, of course. <laughs> Keel in possession once again, but staffs, staffs just need to get the ball down. They've been playing really good football when they've had the ball on the floor, but they just seem to be giving it away pretty cheaply at the moment. Uh, getting to ask a lot of um, Christoph up front, um, especially in these late yeah. stages. You can't ask him to run that much as Falker. Especially if you want him to take a penalty. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You want people to be in and fit. State physically and mentally as well. He scores goals in this ground anyway. <laughs> Hijazi shoots for Keel and he's possibly won it for Keel. Hijazi with the goal, cut it great, on the inside and goal. finds the top corner. The scenes on the far side are incredible. And Staffs, well, I don't think they can be too disappointed with that because it was a fantastic goal. Kerr had contained the forward for the entire game, but the one time he broke through, the one time he got a shot away, it beat Cadman, who has been so good in goal. I wouldn't say Hijaz, he deserves his goal. He's been very quiet, but he's popped up at the right time at the right place. And it's like the summer all over again, isn't it, boys? Yeah. Late heartbreak for Stas, but there is still time for another twist in this tail yet. Christoph and Falkner standing, Falkner standing over the ball. Christoph will get us underway. Big last five minutes here for Staffs. Kerr will put the ball forward. It's Woodruff that's making a run. Few Jones tries to get down. And it's a throw into Staffs. Staffs will throw the kitchen sink at this last few minutes now. This is where heroes will be made. Faulkner, Faulkner tries to get a slide in. A slide in I'm not tackle, sure why sorry. the Keel players are complaining when it was a trip on two, two involving two Staffs players. <laughs> Staffs are starting to look tired now. A uh, little bit slow reacting. A little bit leggy. Yeah, that, that goal desperate. was put Keel up as well. Hijazi, the goal scorer, thinks he's won it for, for Keel. Uh, tries to chase down. And Keel are going to make a change here to slow the game up. Notice how I think the staffs 
fans have been if on the bat in the battle of the fans as much is so important in varsity and i think the staff's guys have won it not from a biased opinion but the only time keel have been singing is when they've been in fr up front and even then they've not been we've not heard a great deal obviously when they score it's an almighty roar from the, the terracing on the far side uh, as a uh, cabman can do better with those goal kicks as it goes straight to Elliot Kitchen, who has just come on for Keel, for the potential match winner, Hijazi. He's left the field. Deserved a good reception there, and he got one certainly. As staffs look to attack down the right hand side. Not long it, left it's now. Anything, long anything will do for Keel now. Any clearance will do. As staffs look to use the time as much as possible. And Keep the ball in the kill half. Copy us. Smith yeah. looks very depleted right here on this near side to our seat. He looks beat. He looks a beaten man. <laughs> he knows this is his last chance to beat Keel in varsity. I don't think Smith can be disappointed with his personal performance. He's played very well, including an, an absolute screamer of a goal in the first half to set up these extra time periods as Falker chases down Greasford. It's a good touch by Woodruff, who beats Grange. But Griesford comes in, the right back, who has been brilliant for Keel all game. Even though he hasn't managed to contain Smith very well. She's now He's been a live to lump the ball into the box. He needs to get players like X, get players like Christoph. <laughs> even get play, even Kerr and Gonzalez. This is it. Smith. Referee will come over for an incident on this near side, just in front of us and just in front of the staff's fans. Smith will get a booking. I think that's the frustrations talking. Indeed. If staffs lose this game, it will be very unlucky and I think undeserved because, but there's always got to be a winner in varsity. There does. There will be a winner at the end of the day, either way. And to take the game, 1-1 one, one to full time, uh, I think, is an achievement in staff sense, especially having been having the previous results in varsity um, been not so good in staff's favour. As X will look to hoof the ball up forwards towards Volker, who chases. Oh, oh and Murphy almost. in the keel goal. Uh, he's not the tallest of men, he's not, and he's not the biggest of figures he's, in he's between the goal, but. Right now. Almost misjudged it. Volker was chasing him behind. A lot of guys on the referee now. Can he lift it forward this time? He finds Smith, who heads it on to Christoph. But he's even wrong foots himself. Was there? A, I don't think there was a foul in there, despite the staff's protests. Kerr puts the ball forward again. Christoph looks for the flick on, but Ran will play it towards his his substitute and teammate Kitchen. And it's gone all the way back to Mr. USA, Ben Cabman. And that's there it, is. it's full time. Unfortunately, it's not to be for staffs, but Keel and the celebrations over there tell you just how much it means. <laughs> Unfortunately, it will be not the night for staffs. It's, I, have, I don't have any words, I have to say, it's, been one of those games where it could have gone either way. Staffs are deflated on the floor. But Keel has celebrated really well. I'll hand you over to the presenters now to wrap up. Uh, There's full time. Keel two, Staffs one. That's a wide That's a wide user. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> Take over. There you go. In position now.
That's got him for Staffs, isn't it? It's finished 2-1 after extra time. Staffs are in that for most of that second half. They should have taken some more chances, shouldn't they? I think it's fair to say they could have. Um, I think if you got a, a poor kill. You can see the scenes right behind us. Staffs are absolutely gutted. And rightfully so, they've put an absolute shift here today. Um, it's, it's such a shame, but the, the fans have come in their droves, as I was saying, at the very beginning of the game. And the support is obviously appreciated by the Staffs players here. But for Kiel as well, they are going to be going home the victors today. And honestly, they put in a great shift as well. They're from both sets of teams, both sets of fans, they've come here. And it's been an amazing game. And what a goal there. Yeah. I mean, the goal to finish you off, just, just absolutely, you, you know, you just... When the goal went in... As a goalkeeper, you, yeah, nothing I, I, you can do. Yeah, really nothing so. you can do. It's it's well placed, struck. Yeah. Uh, nice finesse from us on the box. Well, okay, what else can a goalkeeper do? But it was a good game. Um, I think... The second half really showed like staff wanted that game. They wanted to get a goal to probably just just set it off. Um. I've I've just found the culprit. <laughs> the linesman there, who was on this near side, uh, joined the uh, just before we went live at half time. He tapped me on the shoulder and obviously you know, you know the one. Safeful falls <laughs> and he's, he's got me well and truly and he's he's just congratulated me for uh, for being a bit uh, savvy of uh, seeing the referee. <laughs> but you know. If, if, if you go down to a goal that's just a bit scrappy, you, you know, these lads can, can hang their heads high. The smiles on these faces as well, aren't they? You know, they're gutted they've lost. You can tell they're gutted. But they can out, you know, they've taken Keel, who were the favourites to win this game from the offset, to extra time. They took them to a knife edge in all yeah. reality. They really, really stuck in. And that's a credit to the staff's team. They really did dig in deep. And they took their chances firstly in that first half. Secondly, in the second half, it was obviously... It was a tight affair, and it, I think it was fair to go into extra time and see where the real leaders were. And unfortunately for staffs, it was the Keel at the end of the day. They are all there yeah. celebrating with their fans who have come down. And realistically for Keel, they have put in a great performance. I, I, as you say, either team deserved this tonight. Yeah. And just Keel just held on at the end. They, they, they played a, a very well, a very good game. They held on when staffs were attacking. As we say, staffs could have taken some some chances. We are going to try and get some interviews as well uh, with some of the players um, for, uh, for for staffs and for Kill. We'll try and get a, a few interviews and a bit of a reaction uh, to uh, the game. Um, but it's it's just gutting. Um, I believe we're going to be talking to Joshua Kerr here, yeah, who is the centre back for staffs. Josh, yes, that's got in in it. Yeah, it's heartbreak heartbreaking to lose it in that fashion. I mean, I thought we were going right to the end, and I. I thought for large periods, especially once we got that goal, I thought we were the only side in it. I really thought we were going to nick it, but football's a cruel game. It doesn't always go your way, but, but we gave it our all today, and I'm proud of the boys. One, mine and his last ever game. If we're going to go out one way, I don't mind going out like that. Every single player gave their all today. I'm proud of every single one of them. You put your bodies absolutely on the line, specifically from your point of view at the backs, and it was absolutely fantastic to be a part of, and honestly... You, could, you definitely cannot hold your heads in shame here today. You put an absolute grit. What is this going to be going forward for the team, obviously in the stands, who are going to be taking on that baton? Well, hopefully, it just it just tells everyone that there's a foundation to build on it. I, I'd like to think every single person that put in their all today. Why can't we go again next year? I mean, it was close last year. It was close this year. We are so close We're to getting get, there. We are going to get We're that win. Me and him may not be here, but. I'm telling you, it is coming. It is coming. Just, be, just stay patient with us, and it, we'll, we will get it eventually. Me, me and him are leaving the club in good hands, so we'll be fine. At next the week. end of the day, we're still winners. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're still winners. <laughs> good lads, these are final year. Good to have them here. But obviously, can we, we can we, we just say as well? We've got to mention it. Your goal. Yeah, I do Play. that every week. I probably yeah! <laughs> every week. <laughs> every week you trade it. You all say that. Um, the, you know, you got into space. You had the shot. It was it sat nicely to be fair. Yeah. I just thought we hadn't had a shot by then, so got to try and yeah, it worked. Luckily, it, got, it worked. So no, he, I was very he, happy to go. He, he, he never shoots, but his missus is watching. So yeah, that's he, it. He, yeah. Fancy, yeah. he fancied it. Straight over to the crowd as well, <laughs> celebrating. So yeah, no, it was a good feeling. But obviously, shame about the result. But can you just talk about what was going through your head at that point, where you got your teammates either side on other shoulder and just running to those fans? I was knackered. It's a long run from there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a long run, so. I was knackered by the time I got there, I had to take a breather, but now it's a good feeling, really good feeling, especially with him all the way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now it's good, covered in beer by the end of it, but Fantastic. Worth it. And what about yourself for leading the line up there? Oh, it was hard, but I had to do it. 
it's good to have him leading from the back as well. Him on, on the left, obviously, not just various players and all that. But yeah, next we go again next year, really. I'm here for one more year, so we go again next year. Do you feel like you needed more support to just get you going? It wasn't really much support. I had support up there. It's just, yeah. I don't know, it's just... I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of them days, really. Sometimes well, it goes I through. You, he's going to score the winner next year. You heard it yeah. from me. Yeah. Patrick. <laughs> next, Patrick. Next season, lads. That will be you. Yeah. It will be. Yeah. It has to be. It will. We'll, we'll be in the stand next season. We'll so, be, yeah. We'll be watching it. We'll be celebrating just as much as all the boys in the field where I win. So. It'd be great to see have you guys come back as the old boys, essentially, and obviously yeah, cheering yeah, those teams it. on. But, no, thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. It's been an absolute pleasure to no see you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, lads. Well played. Well done. Thank you. Played. So um, that's the staff's point of view. Of course, they've they've lost. We are trying to get some interviews with Keel. As you can tell, they are celebrating what is uh, another victory for Keel. Of course, this puts them in front on the on the varsity uh, standings. Yeah, two one for Keel now. It of is course. two one now. Um, but there's plenty of opportunities for Keel, uh, for staff to get back into this. And if they can put a performance like that all the other teams, then why can't staff win varsity this year? Keel have got the upper hand now, of course. Staffs are still in this, aren't they? Definitely, definitely still in it. Um, they've got a bit more more sports to play, um, so definitely, definitely, you it's, something it's, to look forward to. Yeah. It's only the beginning. Yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, isn't it? It's um, we've got so much to give, and uh, and so have Keel. At the end of the day, it'd be great to speak to we'll some get, of the players here. We're yeah. going to try and grab some of them. If if any of them are up for talking. Um, sum up that. Huh? Sum up that performance. It was it was a terrible game to watch, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think because Ollie and I are in our third year now, we've learned in years gone by um, how to play against you guys. You're in a few league higher, higher than us by two. I think you come into Come on! <laughs> you come into the game as favourites, and I think we use that to our advantage playing on the counter attack. There were times where we let you have the lion's share of the ball. Um, smash and grab. I think we knew we were going to win it from the from the off. And yeah, to, to be honest, we, we we kept you to one. It was a quality goal, but a fluky goal. Um, he was probably your worst player on the pitch. So <laughs> the, fact that, the fact that he's pulled, the fact that he's pulled that out, I think we were comfortable. Lloyd hardly ever safe to make. Yeah, yeah. I think the best I team think, won. I think the the the, the, the hardest working team won. Yeah. Full backs, both of them, up and down the pitch. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Worked hard, all of them. All of them. I mean, you certainly worked hard, as you're saying yeah. there. You know, a lot of the coming into extra time, it was a big game going back and forth. But obviously, you're going down a bit of cramp as well. How was that in terms of the physical aspect? The physical aspect. It was tough. It was nasty. We were sort of limited to five subs. We yeah. made three subs around the sort of 55, 60 minute mark, yeah. which we thought would win us the game. Then all of a sudden, we going into extra time, only a couple of subs left. Hmm. Manny, our centre back, who was a rock, um, went off injured. Then all of a sudden, I'm going down with cramp. Dave's going down with cramp. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was tough, but I think because, like I said, we get up for it that little bit more because yeah. we know that you're the favourites and I think we want it more every single year. Yeah. And I think until we're in a league above you, you're never going to want it as much as we are. Um, yeah. No so matter, so no matter we, how we dig in when we go down. Cramp, it's fucking willpower. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's like, a <laughs> it's, cup, it's like a cup final, isn't it? Yeah. It makes it ten times more intense. And then when you're playing for 110 minutes as well with that. I mean, you were, you were taking a lot of tackles. Yeah. I, I did half field in, in that, the game. That tackle oh, down good. here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you dish him out and you, you, you got to learn to take him as well. Yeah, and that was right in the first minute. I thought they saw that I was the best player on the pitch and they targeted me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, you get that at all levels of the game. And that's something you've got to deal with. I've been dealing with that for 22 years now, so it's fine. A word from the goal scorer? <laughs> the new staffs. It was a really cagey game, yeah, honestly. I, I think everyone. I mean, you saw it at the end. As soon as we we scored, just blasting it away straight away. It was like that for most of the game, over the top from both teams, and uh, yeah, it, it just game, it just, just wasn't years. a great game for, for the neutral. But for us, I think everyone's playing for like pride, really. So. Yeah. Everyone was nervous to make that mistake, really. No, I think it's a game when no one wants to lose it. 100. Yeah. I was talking to your coach at the start of the game. Yeah. He described it as your Super Bowl, your World Cup. As it's a massive rivalry. Yeah, it exactly. must mean so much to you to be able to go ahead now in the Barcelona leaderboards at two one up. Yeah, fantastic. Two one. Yeah, because you, you sort of forget when you know you become very focused on on the ball at your feet or, or the pitch and the two goals, and you forget that it's actually our uni against Staff's uni, and it's, it's it's much bigger than just a football match. And this is just one point on the board, and hopefully. Tennis team, cricket team, rugby team can all go and get the get the dub as well and um, carry on in good form. I mean, the cricket and the tennis would get points if 
if they were playing. If they were playing. <laughs> See, this just shows how little I know about the event. I mean, you know, lacrosse, hockey, whoever else yeah, we, is, we, is we, we focus on the football, we, don't we? We, but we, we take care of our business, and that's all we can do. I just hope the other teams work around your your momentum going in. Yeah. Obviously, you've, you've I think everyone, even even the American football yesterday, I think everyone has that heart from both unis. So you can't say. But I think it's again. We, we just. I think we want it more because we're always striving to achieve. I mean, you guys are in a higher league. We always. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like with the game, we were the more organised side. We uh, we focused on getting the shape quickly. Two banks of four. Yeah. Back in and and and. Thanks to this man. Thanks to the gaffer. Yes. No. <laughs> He's camera shy. He's camera shy. We um, dug in. We kept to the, kept to the game plan, and we won the game. That's all. Yeah. We, that's all yeah. we needed to do. We've done it. No, I mean, all our reasons aside, it is always a good game when when Kiel plays staffs, and um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I hopefully think it's worth saying as well. To kept everything organised. The captain here. Oh, I mean, you. it was quality Jeez. all game from you. Just coming back from injury, you can't. Can't play any better than that. I still got a bit of. Bit of it's still got a bit, yeah. Okay. Out, <laughs> so he's, just, he's just that good that no. he can play injured. But as I say, every, every lad in the team played well, so yeah. just nice to win it. And you heard how much it meant to the fans as well. God yeah. bless them. Yeah. Safe trip home, fans, if you're watching this. <laughs> yeah, fair play to everyone. Five to miles away. Yeah. yeah, no, it was class. Class to be a part of. It's my first varsity. Ollie played last year. Um, and me and Cooper are going yeah, again in, in, the, yeah. in the indoor football on Wednesday. But no, it was, it was everything that I thought it would be, and, and a bit more, to be honest. So. Yeah. Um, it's just yeah. such a great atmosphere from it. Well, we best let you go because I think your gaffer's uh, wow. trying to pull you away it's from us. And, uh, yeah, name, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and don't, right. don't go too hard with the celebrations. Yeah, <laughs> I will be. Cheers. Cheers. All the best. Come on! Cheers. Cheers. So there we go. There's the Kiel perspective <laughs> of the uh, men's football. <laughs> Lads, have you enjoyed yourself? Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure working beside you, Josh, and the Euclidus. It's yeah, been indeed, amazing indeed. to be part of, honestly. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Uh, my first Varsity game, my first first time presenting. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I did all right. Yeah, <laughs> you did all right. <laughs> we'll put you in the all right <laughs> category. Uh, obviously, me and you again tomorrow. We will be there. Uh, quarter past five uh, for the uh, women's Half rugby. Half past five. It's quarter past five. We're going oh, there. Oh, we're going on air at quarter past, past five. five. <laughs> come on, come on, Joe. Almost let's keep there, up. almost there. Um, it's been a long night. It has been a really long night here. Uh, obviously, going to extra time. We didn't really want penalties, did we? And Keel, uh, thankfully, uh, give us the goal to uh, prevent us going from to penalties. So we'll see you tomorrow at a quarter past five. We're literally next door. Uh, unfortunately, we can't keep our kit here, so we've got to take it back to the uni now. So uh, <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with you, gents. And yourself, Josh. Are you back on again at any point this week? Uh, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> No, he's, got work. <laughs> he's, got yeah, he's got work. He's got work. Yeah. He's got work. Yeah, um, so we'll see you at a quarter past five, me and Joe. And uh, jo join us then. We're on Staffs TV, uh, youtube.com forward slash Staffs TV. We're on omgstaffs.com and we're also on Cube Radio as well. So we'll see you at quarter past five tomorrow evening. We'll see you there.